Hi guys, welcome back to the class and right now we start with our second part wherein right now I am teaching you foreign company chapter. So in your notes please open foreign company chapter. So all those people who have studied through me at uh, any of the class in English or whether you have studied in Hindi with me. So this is a chapter revision. Again I am repeating it is just a revision. It is not teaching. For teaching you have to buy the lecture in case if whenever you are appearing in case of any of your friend, cousins, family friend, office colleague is appearing and they want law lectures they can buy the lectures from the link given below okay so we start with foreign company chapter that's companies incorporated outside india new chapter it will definitely be there in the exam like for next two three attempts i say would definitely be asking you so first section is section 242 242 so it is a company which is incorporated outside india having a place of business in india uh, established either through itself or through agent whether physically or electronically and conducting any business activity in india that's the definition 242 so they have to file scrap a so what is s uh, section is 380 section is what 380 Scrap S. S says details of secretary, directors, their name, address, occupation, nationality. C. Details of charter, Mahua, Ova in English. If it is not in English, then a certified translated copy. R. Full address of the registered office, foreign, foreign wala. A. Authorized person resident in India. A. Authorized person resident in India. P. Place of business in India. E. Eligibility. Eligibility, what you will say? None of the directors or authorized person have been ever debarred, whether in India or outside India. Okay, they will give a declaration. Scrapper should be given to ROC of New Delhi in form number FC1. What is the form number? FC1. Within how many days? 30 days of establishment of business. Any alteration you will give in, uh, any alteration scrapper you will submit in form number FC2 within 30 days of making the alteration. Any alteration scrapper should be filled in form number FC2 within 30 days of making alteration. Then, sir, place of business include what? Three Section is 3060. It includes share transfer office, share registration office. Share transfer office, share registration office, share transfer office, share registration office. Now, sir, what is deemed Indian company? 379. If in a foreign company, minimum 50% of paid up capital is held by uh, either uh, preference or equity or both is held by either Indian citizen or Indian company, Indian citizen or Indian company, then such company shall be deemed to be, sir, then such company shall be deemed to be a company in corporate India. Then if it is a foreign, uh, it is a deemed Indian company, they have to comply with chapter 22. So what is chapter 22? Chapter 22 is foreign company chapter and such other provisions. What will you say? Such other provisions as may be prescribed by CG. Such other provisions as may be prescribed by CG. Such other provisions as may be prescribed by CG. You have to comply with chapter 22. That's foreign company because you are a foreign company. And some other provision because you are an Indian company. So central government will tell which provision you have to apply. So these four sections are very important. Definition will be there in the exam. Then section 381. It says accounts of foreign company. Every foreign company shall prepare the FS of its Indian business operation as per Schedule 3, as per Schedule 3 or as near thereto, including documents to be attached, including documents to be attached uh, as per Chapter 9, that is accounts of company, as per Chapter 9, accounts of company. And uh, they have also have to attach the latest CFS, they also have to attach the latest CFS and other documents which the CG has prescribed. But if you want exemption, guys, if you want exemption, what you have to do? You have to apply to CG. You have to apply to CG. For exemption, you will apply to CG. The above document should be in English. If it is not in English, then a certified translated copy. Foreign company should also give it to ROC. What? List of place of business in India. List of place of business in India. In form number FC3. Form number, guys, FC3. Form number FC3. Now, foreign company shall also give a statement. Three state. Along with the statement, they have to give three statements. Along with the FS, they have to give three statements. Statement of real party transaction, repatriation of profits, transfer of funds. Real party transactions, repatriation of profits, transfer of funds. All the documents, all the documents should be submitted to ROC within within six months from the close of the financial year. Within six months from the close of financial year, and it should be audited by a practicing CEO or CFO, including LLP. It should be audited by a practicing CEO or CFO, including LLP. Cool. Now, section three eighty two 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 disclosure. Section three eighty two two disclosure. So the name of the company and the country of incorporation. What it is? Name of the company and the country of incorporation should be exhibited outside every office or place of business in English and in local language and it should also be stated on all the letters, bills, notices in English. Sir, second disclosure, the liability of the members is limited. The fact that the liability of members is limited, same point, should be exhibited outside office, place of business in English and local language and it should also be stated on all the letters, bills, notices and prospectus. What is added? Prospectus in English. Prospectus in English. Okay. 382, two disclosures. 383, service of documents. 383, service of documents. How you will serve? Or to the authorized person, either by post, hand delivery, electronic mode. Post, electronic mode, hand delivery. 383 service of documents. Uh, CASA section 3D char, char charges. So foreign company shall file returns to ROC in respect of creation, modification, satisfaction of charge. Creation, modification, satisfaction of charge. Now, few sections will be mutatis mutandis applicable to foreign company. What are the few sections? Sir, first one, section 71 that talks about issue of debentures. 92 annual return. Then 128 books of accounts. 135 CSR. Then uh, 
uh, chapter 6 that talk about the charges and chapter 14 inquiry inspection investigation inquiry inspection investigation so this section shall apply mutatis mutandis to foreign company 71 92 128 135 chapter 6 chapter 14 okay and uh, one important point annual return should be given in form number fc4 fc4 within within 60 days so four forms are there fc1 it is 30 days from coming to india fc2 alteration 30 days from the date of making alteration fc3 uh, list of list of business within six months from the close of financial year fc4 annual return within 60 days from the close of the financial year so three and four is from the uh, close of financial year that is six months and 60 days sir penalty very very important very important penalty sir 392 minimum 1 lakh maximum 3 lakhs minimum 1 lakh maximum 3 plus 50,000 rupees per day per day per day till the default continues per day per day till the default continues officer ka fine is 25 to 5 lakh 4 mark ka answer officer 25 to 5 lakh company 1 2 3 1 2 3 and 50,000 per day 50,000 per day okay then next section 6 contents of prospectus section number is what 387 contents of prospectus sir an instrument defining or constituting the constitution of company that's my wow Number two, the provision under which the company was incorporated. The provision under which the company was incorporated. Then, address of place in India where the above documents can be inspected. Address of place in India where the above documents can be inspected. D, date of incorporation. D, date of incorporation. E, country. E, country of incorporation. F, address of place of business in India. Address of place of business in India. Okay, the first three. The first three, A, B, C. A, B, C should not be given, should not be, is not applicable when the prospect is issued after, after, after two years, two years, two years of commencement of business for and so ABC is not applicable when the prospect is issued after two years of commencement of business. Clear? 389 talks about an access to prospectus. An access to prospectus. That's what will you add behind the prospectus. Prospectus should be signed with ROC before circulation and it should be approved by chairman and two directors. It should be approved by chairman and two directors. Number one, sir, expert opinion you will add. Number two, copy of contracts with MBWTD. If the contract is not in writing, then the memorandum should be attached. Then material contracts not entered in ordinary course. Guys, material contracts not entered in ordinary course but entered in last two years. Material contracts not entered in ordinary course but entered in last two years. And then copy of underwriting contract. E. Power of attorney. What is E? Power of attorney if prospect is signed by the agent of the directors. Power of attorney if the prospect is signed by the agent of directors. Okay. So these five things will be annexed to prospect. 389. Then Indian deposit receipts. So a company which is incorporated outside India, having a place of business in India or not having a place of business in India. That means a company which is, whether it's a foreign company or not a foreign company, only they, only they can issue IDR, only they can issue IDR which should be authorized by CG in addition to the direction issued by SEBI and RBI. So the rules will be, rules will be framed by CG in consultation with SEBI and RBI. Rules will be framed by CG in consultation with SEBI and RBI. Now, 393, section is what? 393. It says, company's failure to comply with the provision of this chapter not to affect the validity of contracts. Section 393, if company has contravened the provisions, okay, whatever contract they have made prior to that, those contract, those contract will be valid, those contract will be valid. Any failure by a foreign company to comply with this chapter will not affect the validity of the contract or a dealing or a transaction entered by the company or its liability to be sued. They can't sue, but somebody else can sue. They can't sue, but somebody else can sue. Section number is what? 393. Then, the company shall not be entitled to bring any suit, claim any set off, make any counterclaim or constitute any legal procedure until the company has complied with the provision of this chapter okay so you can't file the suit you can't claim set off huh. somebody else can sue on you then very kasa section 34 35 36 shall apply mutatis mutandis to foreign company and winding up chapter 20 shall also apply mutatis mutandis to foreign company shall also apply mutatis mutandis to foreign company section 34 35 36 plus chapter 20 that is winding up shall apply mutatis mutandis to foreign company this is section number 391 kasa section expert ka consent See, sir, if you are taking the expert ka consent, uh, you are taking expert ka opinion, obviously you will take his consent to be added in the prospectus. So you add consent also, you add opinion also. But sir, you have taken you have taken the opinion, but you are not adding that opinion. So he has given some opinion somewhere and you are using that reference, yeah, that reference, that reference. Will it be assumed that you are using expert ka opinion? The answer is yes. So if you are using that opinion, you have to take his consent and that consent should also be attached. So if you have added the opinion or you have added the reference, it will assume that expert has given the opinion. And if expert has given the opinion, you have to take his consent and consent should also be attached. Okay. Read this section from the screen. Only read. Read.
done now four forms are there fc1 2 3 4 1 registration 2 alteration 3 place of business 4 annual return 30 days from the establishment of business 30 days of the alteration 6 months from the close of financial year 60 days from the close of financial year finish foreign company prime ish again i am telling you it is not a fast track batch it is not a crash course it is just a pure revision for the exam content no time pass straight to the point okay foreign company very 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 important chapter okay now come to a chapter called as membership again very simple I am not getting membership in my book. Yeah. Membership. So define members and ways of acquiring membership. So member means a member does not include bearer of share wallet. What will you say? Member does not include bearer of share wallet. You can become member by state. Subscribing to the MAUA T transfer A allotment T transmission E estoppel. Sir, subscribing to the MAUA T transfer A allotment T transmission E estoppel. Important estoppel for the exam. Sir, who can become a member in a company? Everybody can become a member. Society, trade union, foreigner, government, insolvent, who is already a member. Okay, New insolvent cannot become. Joint shareholder can be a member in the company. Trust, HUF partnership firm. Who? Sir, trust, HUF partnership firm cannot, cannot become a member. Trust, HUF partnership firm cannot become in the member in a company. However, a partnership firm can become a member of Section 8 company. Partnership firm can become a member of Section 8 company. Partnership firm can become a member of Section 8 company. Now, Sir, can a minor be a member in a company? Sir, as per Indian contract, any agreement with minors void have been issued. However, Companies Act does not contain any disqualification. As per Mohiri Bibi versus Dharamdas Ghosh, it was held that the minor can be a beneficiary. Minor cannot subscribe to the MAUA, agreed, because any agreement with the minor is void. Minor can become a member by what? Transfer or transmission, by transfer or transmission, provided, provided the shares are fully paid. A very important line. Minor can become a member by way of transfer or transmission, provided the shares are fully paid. Up. The company should take care to enter the name of the uh, enter the name of guardian in the register of members in the register of members. Then, sir, what are the rights of member? To receive notice, to vote, to attend meeting, to declare dividend, to appoint proxy, and to appoint auditor or director. So these are the rights of member. Receive notice, vote, attend meeting, declare dividend, appoint proxy, and appoint director auditor. Then fifth, how can a membership be terminated? How can the membership be terminated? Sir, fish two. The code was fish two. F four feature of shares. I Issue of share warrants in exchange of share certificate. S. Surrender of shares. S. Sale of share. T. Transfer. One more T. Transmission. Fish 2. Four feature. Issue of share warrants. Sale of shares. Surrender of shares. Transfer. Transmission. Finish. Two, only two points are important. First, minor can become a member. Provide the shares are fully paid up. That is one point. Number two, uh, estoppel wala point. You can, if you are a member by estoppel, you are liable for the debts of the company. Okay. Chapter over. Very simple chapter. Next, we are doing General Clauses Act. We are doing General Clauses Act, okay? General Clauses Act, okay? So, very simple chapter. 3 to 6 marks of weightage. Sir, what is the purpose of the act? It is the purpose is to provide interpretation of various terms, providing the statute, act or statute spelling is wrong, which is given in the Central Act. The terms which are not defined or where which is defined but the interpretation is contradictory. So this act will be used. So when it is applicable. If you remember the diagram, if you, this diagram we have studied long back. If an act is formed after GC 1897, okay, then the GC 1897 will be applicable to the wholly. But if there is an act which came before 1868, like Society Registration Act, then GCA will not be applicable. However, if an act came between 1868 to 1887 and 1887 to 1897, then the GCA will be applicable partially. GCA will be applicable partially for some definition. Okay. So, GCA is applicable on all the central acts formed by the parliament with the assent of President of India. 
when after 26 January 1950 this diagram if an act is formed after 26 January it will be approved by parliament and approved by via president if the act was formed before republic day then it will be approved in constitution assembly and approval of the governor general approval of the governor general is required so gc 1897 is applicable on all the central act formed by the parliament with the assent of the president of india or formed by with the constituent assembly with the assent of governor general understand pre uh, pre republic and post republic however section 4 provides that that the provision of such shall also apply partially shall also apply partially on all the central acts which were incorporated during the applicability of gca 1868 or gca 1897 so it will be applicable partially not completely partially never they will never ask in the exam types of states you can mark this as rtp type of states mark this as rtp now next question is explain preamble so preamble is basically when you open the bare law you have to read the first few lines it gives you the object scope of the act it does not override the provision of the law Ex uh, every act has a preamble which expresses the scope object and purpose of the act it act as an aid to interpretation it helps in interpreting the act preamble does not override the provision of the act but it can be used for interpretation of the act okay the next answer explain definition definition ka definition we are studying so every act contains some definition which is usually written either in section 2 3 or some initial section that section 1 however if the definition is mentioned in that you will follow that definition if it is not followed or the interpretation is contradictory you follow gc act 1897 should be followed okay very important answer means and includes means it is used in the definition it that is it is called as exhaustive definition if it is used in the if includes is used in the definition it is called as extensive that is inclusive definition sir means is basically what exhaustive includes is called as inclusive that is extensive definition exhaustive extensive along with the example they have asked two mark ka answer so director means a director appointed by the to the board of the committee it is called exhaustive clear definition same includes means lot of things body corporate includes a company incorporated also india or some other thing that is inclusive definition two mark ka answer three mark ka answer straight away this much only m e me means 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 exhaustive includes means extensive includes means extensive includes means extensive then the word shall is a mandatory force the word may is a directory force correct but shall may be used as may may shall be used as shall correct mandatory force directory force questions from the our, uh, our book okay question there are 22 question do those question thoroughly now few definitions we have to define so i am doing right now all important definition first we are doing affidavit sir affidavits include what any affirmation and declaration in the case of persons by law allowed to affirm or declare instead of swearing so when i am saying that i am saying this thing this 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 okay that i i, I will give it in writing it is called as what affidavit it is called as what affidavit now after i mean when you turn the page you will see that affidavit swearing oath everything means the same affidavit important document so document includes any matter whether it is written or expressed or described upon any substance by means of any letter figures or marks by more than one of those means which is intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of interpret or for recording that matter it is called as document if i draw something on a paper or write i record it is called what document important financial year important financial year versus calendar the question is there in a book it came in the exam two two marks financial means a year which is starting on first day of april ending on 31st march calendar year starting on first january ending on 31st december financial year versus calendar in the book there is there is a question okay sir central act central act means an act of the parliament and shall include an act passed before the commencement of the constitution and an act made before the commencement of the constitution by governor general who will do this by governor general logical before constitution who was there constitution assembly governor general after constitution it is constitution parliament and president of india central government very nice definition if an act is formed before 26 january 1950 then governor general will be the central government and it includes government of province with respect to laws of provinces chief commissioner with respect to the state under control of chief commissioner like we have central government and state government right today at that time it was governor general government of province and chief commissioner with respect to state under the control of chief commissioner now an act which is formed on or after 26 january 1950 who will give the approval president of india and it will include what state government with respect to state government chief commissioner or government of the neighboring state and the administrator of ut this is current states so this also they have asked in the exam explain central government explain central government then important official gazette so official gazette means the gazette of india and the gazette of state gazette of india and the gazette of state 
the gazette of india it's a gadget okay gazette of india is a public journal which is an authorized document which is published by the government of india published weekly mcq published weekly by the department of housing and urban affairs now it is printed by which government of india press it is printed by whom government of india press so three mark ka four mark ka answer explain official gazette it is basically gazette of india or the official gazette of state it is a public document which is published weekly by the government of india via which department department of housing and housing and urban affairs it is uh it is printed by the government of india press clear the term affidavit oaths were all have the same meaning sir what is effective date if the date is mentioned from the midnight of that date when we say a law is effective from this date so from which date sir from the date if the date is specified from that particular date if the date is not specified the day when the act has been assented by the assented by the in case of uh, president of india when the acts are incorporated after 26 january 1950 and governor of india if the act is incorporated before 26 january 1950 Okay, then explain repeal of provision, deletion of provision. Repeal is basically you have removed it, delete is like permanently delete. Okay, so just read this. You need to mark it up. Direct answer. You need to mark it up. Read this answer right now from the screen. done so repeal brings complete obliteration means complete deletion of the provision as if it never acted is like ukhad ke fekna in hindi bhi se ukhad ke fekna is removed completely okay now deletion only takes effect from the date from that date it is deleted deleted means it is deleted from that date and repeal means it is removed like from it, it never existed only in the provision okay it never existed now explain commencement and termination of time okay So, for the purpose of law, when you calculate, there are questions on this. I mean, like debate. The question is, when you calculate the time limit, how do you calculate? The first day should be included, and sorry, the first day should be excluded, excluding the first day, including the last day, excluding the first day, including the like when we say uh, we have posted this letter and it should reach by within thirty days. Okay, so what will you do? You will exclude the first day, include the last day, exclude the first day, include the last day. From the word if from is used, excluded, and if it is to, you have to include this. Refer questions for more clarity. Exclude the first day, include the last day. computation of time now time to take legal action okay within the time you have to take the like action within the specified time like 2 years 3 years now if that day if that day if the court is closed if on that day the court is closed if it is a limitation act or transaction then you will follow which day you have to go the last day with the preceding day preceding day if it is any other act or transaction then the next working day on which the court is open the next working day on which the court is open generally for limitation act transaction is the previous day but if any any other act transaction it will be next working day on which the court is open limitation act is like 3 years time bar date wala point 
gender uh, gender and mask uh, numbers the word importing the masculine gender shall be taken to include females the male will include female male will include female the words in singular shall also include the plural and vice versa however bullocks could not okay so the word bullocks will not could not be interpreted to include cows okay so this is important because there is a question in the uh, question bank in our book okay now what is the procedure to make rules or bylaws like imagine if ICA came up with the new notification they are bringing the new law so what is the procedure generally so it says whereby any central like a power to make rules or bylaw is expressed to be given subject to the condition in the previous publication then the procedure will be following is the procedure first the authority has the power to will publish the draft of the proposed rules for the information of the interested person like all the stakeholders ICI students were there CAs were there government was there okay whatever you have a comment you please tell us the comment then the publication shall be made in such manner as the authority deem fit as the authority deem fit the time period shall be published uh, should be published in the draft published by the authority like it will be open for two months it will be open for 30 days then the interested person will make the recommendation and the objection received from the interested person uh, if the authority is in consultation with any other board then or panel then the recommendation their recommendation should also be considered thereafter the authority shall punish sorry shall publish shall wrong it is, it is published shall publish the rules and the bylaws and that publication shall be conclusive evidence of framing that particular law, law or rule so if uh, considering those comments whatever comments they have received whatever what they have received it will be published once it is published it means it is applicable it is applicable okay now punishment under two acts it is punishment under two acts so if you are punished in like C act also in companies act also so you will not be punished in two acts there you will be punished only in one act so when an act or omission constitutes an offense under two or more acts then the earlier the offender shall be liable to be prosecuted and punished under either either or any of those enactments but shall not be punished twice but shall not be punished twice okay so there are question advocate wala question is there in the book please do that question now meaning of service by post what it is it is meaning of service by post important answer now all these are important answers where any law or regulation requires any document to be served by post then unless a different intention appears it will always be assumed that it is effective when you are properly addressing it you are prepaying it that means you are paying the post company and you are sending it by registered post you are sending it by registered post properly addressing it prepaying it and, and posting it by registered post if a notice is required to be sent by registered post acknowledgement due then it should be sent by registered post acknowledgement due only but if it is sent by registered post then the benefit of section 27 will not be applicable okay if somebody has refused it or not claimed it it will be assumed that they have served so rent wala question is there in the question bank okay the rent wala question is there do those questions thoroughly good faith a thing shall be doomed to we have done in good faith uh, when in fact it is done honestly whether it is done negligently or not however remember jago grahak jago the term, the term good faith has been defined differently under different laws an honest purchase made carelessly without making proper inquiries cannot be said to have been made in good faith so as to convey good title so as to convey good title an honest purchase made carelessly without making proper inquiries cannot be said to have been made in good faith so as to convey good title okay government wow the word government or the government shall include both central government and state government also however whenever the word government is used it will include both central and state government time pass answer important answer immovable property what it says sir immovable property includes land benefits arising out of land things attached to the earth and permanently fastened to the anything which is attached to the earth okay i have a land on that there's a building in building there's a machinery okay so that machine is also immovable property that building is also immovable property that land is also immovable property like land trees roads okay but two things are not immoral property what from the model we have done this timber and right to drain water is not immoral property don't ask me logic but it is not immoral property in mcqs they can ask timber is logical this is a tree when you cut this so tree is immoral property okay when you cut this it is a timber like the wood it is not immoral property and right to drain what it is given in the model so you mug it up it is not immoral property understood one more chapter done cool next we start with the next chapter Next chapter we are doing is LLP. Please open LLP Act. Okay, let's start. Sir, so what it says? So LLP important points. Bill was passed on twelfth December two thousand eight. President Cotton came on 7th Jan 2009. Act was notified on 9th Jan 2009. Applicable to whole of India. How many sections are there? 81. Now 81 is now omitted. All 81, only 81 is now omitted. And there are four schedules. 
first second third fourth first talks about rights and duties of partner conversion of form into llp conversion of private into llp public into unlisted public company into llp rights and duties of partner form into llp uh, that's partnership firm then private into llp public company into llp llp is a hybrid between the company and partnership basic of your foundation now what are the features of llp so it is the liability will be limited to the extent of the capital contribution now llp itself will be liable for the all the debts of the company to the extent of its assets to the all the debts in case there is a debts to the extent of its asset now it allows the partners the flexibility of organizing their internal structure alternative organizing corporate business vehicle it is and it is a new form of legal business entity with limited liability features very rare in the exam refer definition from the book okay body corporate financial year foreign llp body corporate ka definition financial ka definition foreign llp this this you have to read it from the book okay now what is small llp a small very important it will come in the exam for sure or maybe in mcq uh, llp means a uh, small llp means contribution is less than or equal to 25 lakh that's max and turnover is max 40 lakhs 25 lakhs 40 lakhs 25 lakh 40 lakh and meet such other requirement or conditions or meet such other requirements or condition which may be specified right now no, not nothing is specified contribution maximum 25 lakhs and turnover maximum 40 lakhs if you remember small company we have done 4 and 40 capital and turnover 440 440 right 4 uh, crores and 40 crores here it is contribution and turnover it is 25 lakhs and 40 lakhs 25 lakhs and 40 lakhs now sir what are the advantages of llp it is formed it is a form of business model which is uh, which is which is organized and operates as a basis of an agreement it provides flexibility without imposing detailed legal and procedural requirements it is easy to form what will you say it is easy to form all the partners enjoy limited liability all the partners enjoy limited liability and it is easy to dissolve it is easy to dissolve so what it is it is basically the advantage of llp now sir partners an individual or a body corporate can be a partner in llp an individual or a body corporate can be a partner in llp an individual cannot be a partner if he is unsound mind undischarged insolvent and applied for insolvent that's logical now following persons can become a partner in llp following persons can become a partner in llp who are the people individuals resident non residents overseas citizens of india and foreign nationals in resident non resident overseas citizens of india foreign national llp can also become company including foreign company can become foreign llp can also become llp incorporated outside india having no place of business in india and foreign companies can also become partners in llp can also become partner in llp however corporate society and corporation cannot become partners in llp two important points corporations and corporate society cannot become partner in llp corporations and corporate society cannot become partner in llp now minimum partners so sir there should be minimum how many partners two partners if number of partners fall below two and such llp carries on business for more than 6 months same concept of companies act then the partners who is left will be liable for the obligation of the llp incurred during that period obligation of the llp to incur during that particular period sir designated partner what it is designated partner every llp shall have minimum two designated partners who are individuals who are individual and at least one of them and at least one of them shall be a resident of india what will you say and at least one of them shall be a resident of india if in llp all the partners all the partners are body corporate or in which one is individual and the other are body corporate one is individual and another is body corporate then at least two individuals who are partners of such llp or nominees of such body corporate shall act as designated partner if in llp all the partners are body corporate or in which one is individual other is body corporate then at least two individuals who are the partners of such llp or nominees of such body corporate shall act as a designated partner one should be there okay resident in means means who are staying in india for minimum 120 days minimum 120 days of a financial year okay residential status for llp is different then if the incorporating document state that the designated partner then such person shall be designated partner mr ram sham is dp then he is dp if it states that each partner then from time to time then such dp then ev- shall be dp then every partner shall be dp generally mr ram and sham if they say he will be dp then he is they are dp but if it says each partner from time to time can become dp then every partner will be a dp okay incorporation document basically like we have company memo over here we have incorporating documents any partner may become dp or cease to be dp as per the llp agreement any partner may become dp or cease to partner uh, become dp as per the llp agreement an individual shall become dp only if he has given a prior consent to become dp in the prescribed form so okay i am ignoring the form numbers in the prescribed form every dp shall obtain dp in that is designated partner identification number designated partner identification number clear now sir changes in dp what is changes in dp sir llp shall appoint a dp within 30 days of vacancy arising 
LLP shall appoint a DP within 30 days of vacancy arising. If no DP is appointed or if at any time there is only one DP, then each person, each person shall be deemed to be a designated partner. Then each person shall be deemed to be a designated partner. So what is the penalty for contravening? It says if the number of part DP is less than two, then LLP and each partner shall be liable for minimum 10,000 rupees, 100 rupees per day subject to maximum 1 lakh for LLP, 50,000 for partner. If LLP fails to contract of DP, file, file contract DP within 30 days. So it says this is number false. This you have filed, you have failed to file the contract of DP within 30, like the consent, okay? Then LLP and partner shall be liable first. Minimum is 5,000, here it was 10, here it is 5. 100 per day, 100 per day, 1 lakh, okay, here it is 50,000, 25,000, half half. 10 ka half, 5. 100 per day remains same, 1 lakh ka half 50, 50 ka half 25. If the vacancy of DP is only not filled, then same as point number 1, same penalty, 10,100 per day, 1 lakh maximum, 50,000 for the partner. Okay, penalty important. Then, sir, what are the contents of incorporation documents? Direct theory answer, what are the contents of incorporation documents? Sir, you have to say the name of LLP, then the proposed business of LLP, state the address of the registered office of the LLP. Then state the name and address of each of the persons who are the who can be the partners of LLP on incorporation. State the name and the address of the designated partner and contain such information as may be prescribed. Three mark or four mark answer contents of incorporation document. Name of the LLP, business of the LLP, address, registered office ka address, name and address of the persons who will be the uh, partners on incorporation, designated partner ka details, and any other, any other. Okay. Sir, incorporation by registration. Incorporation by registration. If all the requirements of section 11, that is incorporation document, are complied with, then ROC within 14 days will register the incorporation document and will give a certificate that LLP is con con uh, incorporated by the name so specified. The ROC may accept the statement delivered under section 11 as a sufficient evidence that the, all the requirements of section 11 has been complied with. Okay, he will accept it. The certificate so issued shall be, uh, shall be uh, signed by the register and authenticated by his official seal. So, it is a procedural requirement. Then, the certificate shall be a conclusive evidence that all legal formalities have been complied with and LLP is incorporated. It is a conclusive evidence. Registered office of LLP and changes therein, you have to read the book page 383, point number 5. Okay. People who are doing it from the module, from the module, you have to read 12.7. Just you have to read change of office, register office and changes. Okay. Like we in the companies like we had shifting from one office like Mumbai, say, up in Calcutta, right? Calcutta, you went. Now, sir, what is the effect of registration? LLP shall be capable of suing and being sued. You can also sue. Someone else also can sue. They can acquire, hold, dispose both movable, immobile property, both tangible, intangible property. Okay, have a common seal. Do and suffer other things. Do and suffer other things like a body copy because it's a feature of body copy only. Then, reservation of name. So, few sections you have to just read from the book. ROC will preserve the name for a period of how many months? Three months from the date of information, from the date of intimation by the ROC. Okay. So, ROC, the time it informed you that this name is available, it will preserve the name for three months. Three months. Okay. Model people, module. Book people, book. Then, there is one more answer, rectification of name. Please mark rectification of name important. Like we had in the companies also, here also it is there, rectification of name LLP. Okay, book 384, module 12.18. Now, cessation of partnership interest. What it is? It is called a cessation, means stoppage of partnership interest. Sir, kabo kabo. A partner may cease to become a partner by giving notice of minimum 30 days to other person. A partner may cease to become a partner by giving notice of minimum how many days? 30 days. Babu, yeah. A partner may cease to become a partner by giving a notice of minimum 30 days to other partners. Okay. A partner shall cease to become a partner if on the death, dissolution, declared unsound mind and declared as insolvent. Death, dissolution, unsound mind and insolvent. If a person cease to become a partner, then the former partner, that's ex-partner, shall still, still be a partner unless he has given the notice because it is mandatory to give notice to the partners or he has been, the notice has been delivered to the ROC. So you, either you give inform to the partners or you would inform to the ROC. Then only you will cease to be a partner. So what does that mean? Because if you have not given the notice, then you are still a partner, then you are liable for the debts. You are liable for the debts. The former partner shall also be liable for the acts done with many was a partner. That's logical. The former partner or the person who is entitled to his share, in case like nominee, in case of death or insolvency, shall be entitled to receive what? Capital so contributed and the right to share profits after deducting losses. So if you are alive and you cease to be a partner, so you will receive your capital plus the profit. If you died, your nominee will receive the capital plus the share of profit after deducting the losses. Then, 
फॉर्मर पार्टनर और द पर्सन एंटाइटल शेल हैव नो राइट टू इंटरफेयर इन द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ एल एल पी बिकॉज यूर एक्स वाई वुल यू इंटरफेयर इन द लाइफ ओके देन रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ चेंजेस इन द पार्टनर्स यू जस्ट हैव टू रीड दैट पेज नंबर थ्री एटी सिक्स पार्टनर्स एजेंट एवरी पार्टनर ऑफ एल एल पी इज फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ द बिजनेस एल एल पी शैल बी द एजेंट ऑफ एल एल पी बट नॉट ऑफ द अदर पार्टनर्स ही इज द एजेंट ऑफ द एल एल पी बट नॉट ऑफ द अदर पार्टनर्स लाइबिलिटी एल एल पी का लाइबिलिटी पार्टनर का लाइबिलिटी सो इट्स अ डायरेक्ट आंसर जस्ट ट्राई रीडिंग दिस रीड डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द स्क्रीन एल एल पी का लाइबिलिटी पार्टनर का लाइबिलिटी रीड डन नाउ अनलिमिटेड लाइब्रेटी इन केस ऑफ अ फ्रॉड लाइक फोर फोर्टी सेवन वी हैव इन कंपनी सेक्ट यूर ऑल्सो सीज इन केस ऑफ अ फ्रॉड डन बाई एल एल पी और एनी ऑफ द पार्टनर विद इंटेन टू डी फ्रॉड द क्रेडिटर्स और एनी अदर पर्सन देन दे शैल बी लाइबल फॉर अनलिमिटेड फॉर ऑल और एनी ऑफ द डेट्स और अदर लाइब्रेज ऑफ द एल एल पी हाउ एल एल पी नॉट बी लाइबल इफ द एक्ट इज डन विदाउट द नॉलेज और अथॉरिटी ऑफ द एल एल पी सो पार्टनर्स ऑल्सो लाइबल एल एल पी ऑल्सो लाइबल बट इफ एल एल पी डो नॉट न्यू द फैक्ट दट दे हैव डन द फ्रॉड दियर देन इट विल नॉट बी लाइबल such person shall also be punishable for minimum 50000 maximum 5 lakhs imprisonment 5 years minimum 50 maximum 5 and imprisonment up to 5 years there would be a question so the other reason we have written important this such person shall also be liable to pay compensation to the person who has suffered loss like unlimited liable penalty plus compensation three things financial disclosure they should maintain proper books of accounts in a prescribed manner they should file statement of account and solvency within 6 months from the end of each financial year 6 months from the end of each financial year The statement of accounts and solvency shall be filed with the ROC every year in the prescribed form and manner along with the prescribed fees. Then audit of accounts and central government may exempt them. You have to read page number three ninety main book model people page number twelve point nine seven the audit of accounts. Who will do it? CA will do it. A practicing CA or a form of chartered accountant or LLP. Then next answer is basically your winding up. So LLP may be wound up by the tribunal either or voluntary or by tribunal. finish if the lp decide that the llp may be wound up by the tribunal if for a period of more than 6 months the number of partners is reduced below the two or if the llp has acted against the interests of the sovereignty integrity of the india or the security of the state or public order like against the government of india or if the llp has made a default in filing with roc in the statement of accounts and solvency for how many years for five consecutive years if the tribunal think it is suitable and equitable then kya hoga tribunal will wind up the llp first one is voluntary other one is by the tribunal these are the grounds first one membership i mean partners below 
टू फॉर मोर देन सिक्स मंथ्स नंबर टू अगेन द सॉवेंटी इंटीग्रिटी ऑफ द कंट्री नंबर थ्री एफ एस फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट फाइल स्टेटमेंट ऑफ अकाउंट इज नॉट फाइल फॉर द नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर्स देन फोर्थ इफ इट इज जस्ट एंड इक्विटेबल देन एल पी बाइंड अप रीड डिफरेंसेज ऑन पेज नंबर थ्री नाइनटी सेवन इन द बुक एंड मॉडल में ट्वेल्व पॉइंट थ्री नाइन एनुअल रिटर्न एवरी एल एल पी शेल फाइल एनुअल रिटर्न विद हॉम इंडेस विद इन सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम द क्लोज ऑफ फाइनेंशियल एफ एस फॉर सिक्स मंथ इट इज सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम द क्लोज ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल इन द प्रस्क्राइब फॉर्म पेनल्टी थाउजेंड पर डे मैक्सिमम वन लैक सॉरी हंड्रेड पर डे मैक्सिम वन लैक हंड्रेड पर डे मैक्सिम फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पेनल्टी फॉर फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट इफ अ पर्सन मेक्स एनी फॉल स्टेटमेंट इन एनी रिटर्न स्टेटमेंट डिस्कलोजर विच इज फॉल्स ही नो दट इट इज फॉल्स और ओमिट्स एनी मटेरियल फैक्ट दैन हाउ मच इज अ पेनल्टी इफ इट इज फॉल्स स्टेटमेंट दैन वन लैक टू फाइव लैक इम्प्रेसमेंट टू ईयर्स इफ इट इज ही ओमिट्स इट वन लैक टू फाइव लैक इम्प्रेसमेंट अपू टू ईयर्स सेम हाउ डू वी रिमेबर दिस वन टू का फाइव वन टू का फाइव दैन रीड कॉम्प्रोमाइज अरेंजमेंट पेज नंबर थ्री नाइन थ्री एंड थ्री नाइनटी फाइव जस्ट कॉम्प्रोमाइज अरेंजमेंट दट मीन्स यू आर गिविंग द शेयर टू द क्रेटर्स यू आर नॉट गिविंग मनी टू दैम दैट्स कॉम्प्रोमाइज एंड अरेंजमेंट अगेन रीड वाला पार्ट फिनिश एल एल पी इज ओवर गाइज इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर न्यू चैप्टर इट मे डेफिनेटली कम इन द एग्जाम आई डो नॉट नो दिट इज इट कूड बोर सिक्स एट टेन ट्वेल्व ऑल्सो फ्यू स्मॉल स्मॉल क्वेश्चन टू मार्क मार्क का थ्री मार्क का फोर मार्क का आंसर ओके डू मॉडल क्वेश्चन थरली सॉल्व मॉडल क्वेश्चन थरली Understood? Cool. So, hi guys, welcome back to the class. Today, now we are starting with the chapter called as kinds of company, kinds of company. Okay. Again, people who have studied from different teachers, you will find this in uh, base uh, preliminary chapter only. This is basically the definition of the chapter, definition of the content. Okay. So, for sure, you will see. The weightage of the chapter is minimum four mark. It can go to eight mark also. At least two or three definition you will find it in the exam. So first definition, define what is private company. So a company having a minimum paid up share capital as may be prescribed, and having following restriction is called as a private company. What are the restriction? The code is TRP. The code is TRP. T restriction on transferability of share. R restriction on membership. P prohibition on public issue. So T transferability of restriction transferability of shares R restriction membership P prohibition on public issue. Okay, how much is the membership sir? Maximum two hundred. When accounting two hundred, employee member and ex-employee member, employee member and ex-employee member shall be excluded. Joint shareholder shall be counted as one. Joint shareholder shall be counted as one. Employee member, ex-employee member shall be excluded. And joint shareholder will be always counted as one. Sir, what is a public company? What is a public company? If what if a uh, company which is not a private company is a public company, a company which is other than a private company is called as a public company. The minimum paid-up share capital shall be as may be prescribed. A subsidiary of a public company, a subsidiary of a public company, shall be deemed to be a public company even when such company continues to be a private company in its article. A private company, a private company. If it becomes a subsidiary of a public company, then that private company shall also be called as deemed public company. Shall also be called as deemed public company. Okay. Very rare in the exam you will see this definition. Question number three, very 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 and very important definition. Sir, what is a small company? Sorry, what is a small company? Very important in exam you will find this definition for sure because it's an amended definition of the previous attempt, not this attempt, the previous attempt. Sir, small company is a type of a private company. What will you say, guys? Small company is a type of a private company having paid up share capital of less than or equal to four crore, which can be increased up to ten crores. The government can increase it and Having a turnover of less than or equal to forty crore, which can be increased up to hundred crores, for your attempt, for your attempt, the limit, the limit is how much? Four and forty. What is the limit, guys? Four and forty. So it is less than or equal to that means it is maximum four crore, maximum forty crore, maximum four crore, maximum forty crore. So small company is a type of a private company having a capital of maximum four crore and turnover of maximum forty crore, turnover of maximum forty crores. So nothing in this clause shall apply to a holding subsidiary. That means a small company can never be a holding subsidiary or a section head company or a company governed by any special act. So a small company can never be a holding subsidiary, section head company or company governed by special act. Like, that means like LIC, UTI. They have a different act. Then, sir, government company. So government company means in which minimum fifty one percent, guys. How much percent? Minimum fifty one percent. Minimum fifty one percent. Minimum fifty one percent of PUSC. PUSC means. Paid up share capital is held by central government or state government or both. Is held by state government, central government or both. Then a subsidiary of a government company is also a government company because government's stake is there. A subsidiary of a government company is also a government company. 
द ऑर्डर ऑफ अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इज अपॉइंटेड बाय कैग द ऑर्डर ऑफ अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी इज अपॉइंटेड बाय कैग देन इफ इन अ गवर्नमेंट कंपनी द मेंबर इज सीजी लाइक इट्स अ प्योर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट कंपनी द सीजी शैल कॉज अ एनुअल रिपोर्ट ऑन द वर्किंग ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट कंपनी टू बी प्रिपेयर्ड विद इन थ्री मंथ्स ऑफ द एजीएम विद टू बी प्रिपेयर्ड विद इन थ्री मंथ्स ऑफ द एजीएम एंड पेड बिफोर बोथ द एंड सॉरी एंड लेड बिफोर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट एंड लेड बिफोर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट सर इन केस ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट सेम पॉइंट यर टू बी लेड बिफोर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर विधानसभा विधान परिषद फॉर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट लोकसभा राज्यसभा स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विधानसभा विधान परिषद सर इन केस इफ बोथ द गवर्नमेंट हैव टेकन अ स्टेक बोथ द गवर्नमेंट हैव टेकन अ स्टेक या द रिपोर्ट वुड बी लेड आउट लेड विद इन थ्री मंथ्स वन सेकेंड या बिफोर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट एंड बिफोर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर बोथ द हाउस ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर तो थ्री मंथ इज योर एमसीक्यू वेरी रेयर इन द एग्जाम यू विल फाइंड बट या एमसीक्यू में थ्री मंथ्स कैन कम हाँ डेफिनेशन में फिफ्टी वन परसेंट यू चेक डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज होल्डिंग सब्सिडी में जैसा डिफरेंट परसेंटेज फॉर गवर्नमेंट कमीज मिनिमम फिफ्टी वन परसेंट टेक टू मिनट्स टाइम एंड रिकॉल द डेफिनेशन क्विकली ऑन द स्क्रीन एवरीबडी आई एम यर ओली आई एम स्विचिंग ऑफ द वीडियो आई एम यर ओली प्लीज रीड द डेफिनेशन फ्रॉम द स्क्रीन then question number 5 sir what is a foreign company as per 242 a foreign company is a company so sir foreign company section number is what 242 so foreign company is a company which is incorporated outside india and having a place of business in india established either by itself or through agent whether physically or electronically and conducting any business activity in india All three conditions need to be satisfied. Incorporated outside India, and having a place of business in India, established either through itself or through agent, whether physically or electronically, and conducting any business activity in India. Every foreign company shall give following details to the ROC of New Delhi within thirty days of establishment. So in India, if foreign company is coming, wherever you are doing business, you are doing business in Chennai, Bangalore, Calcutta, wherever you are doing business, sir, within thirty days of establishment of business, you have to submit the documents to ROC of New Delhi. so for you your state ka roc is not applicable foreign company for you the roc is of new delhi what documents you have to give sir scrap a you have to give scrap a scrap a s details of secretary directors like name address and occupation nationality c 
डिटेल्स ऑफ चार्टर स्टैच्यू मऊआ हुआ इन इंग्लिश इफ इट इज नॉट इन इंग्लिश इन सर्टिफाइड ट्रांसलेट कॉपी आर फुल एड्रेस ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड ऑफिस फुल एड्रेस ऑफ रजिस्टर्ड ऑफिस ए डिटेल्स ऑफ ऑथराइज पर्सन रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया ऑथराइज पर्सन रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया पी प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस इन इंडिया पी प्लेस ऑफ बिजनेस इन इंडिया एलिजिबिलिटी ई एलिजिबिलिटी यू विल स्टेट एट नन ऑफ द डायरेक्टर्स और प्रमोटर्स और ऑथराइज पर्सन इज एवर बीन डिबार्ड वेदर इन इंडिया और अब्रॉड नन ऑफ द डायरेक्टर्स और प्रमोटर्स और ऑथराइज पर्सन इज एवर बीन डिबार्ड वेदर इन इंडिया और अब्रॉड ओके देन सेक्शन थ्री सेवेंटी नाइन If in a foreign company, minimum 50 percent for government company we studied minimum 51 percent. Here it is minimum 50 percent of paid up share capital, whether equity or preference or both, whether equity or preference or both. If it is held by Indian citizen or Indian company, if it is held by Indian citizen or Indian company, then that foreign company shall be deemed to be shall be deemed to be incorporated in India. We will assume that this is an Indian company. So if in a foreign company, to be a foreign company, first you have to satisfy the three conditions: incorporated outside India and place of business in India and conducting any business act in India. If in that foreign company minimum 50 percent capital is held by CG, sorry, is held by Indian citizen or Indian company, held by Indian citizen or Indian uh, company or uh, singly or jointly or both, then such foreign company shall be deemed to be incorporated in India. So this is section number 370 of Companies Act 2013. Okay. Again, giving you two minutes time. Please read the definition of foreign company. Read.
allopathy then holding company and subsidiary company if in a company okay if in a, if a company is holding more than 50% of the nominal value shares carrying voting rights in another company or controlling more than half of the composition of the board then this company ab limited becomes the holding company this company becomes the subsidiary company if this subsidiary company is holding more than 50% of the nominal value of the shares carrying voting rights in another company then this subsidiary this subsidiary becomes the subsidiary of the main holding company so this is holding company this is subsidiary this is sub subsidiary this is sub subsidiary okay if in a holding company along with the subsidiary or subsidiaries if a holding company along with the subsidiary or subsidiaries hold more than 50% in this company more than 50% in this company then this company becomes the subsidiary of the main holding company then this uh, that banta limited becomes the subsidiary of the main holding company here you have to check more than 50% in foreign company it was minimum 50% minimum 50% in government company it was minimum 51% minimum 51% okay then dormant company section 455 if a company is formed and registered under companies act for a future project or to hold an asset or intellectual property and has no significant accounting transaction has no significant accounting transaction then such a company is called as a dormant company or inactive company now what a significant transaction means it means any transaction other than this other than this payment of fees to roc payment made by a company for fulfilling the requirements of the act and allotment of shares to the fulfill the requirement of the act or payment for maintaining office and records so this all four are not significant accounting transaction that means if you are doing this transaction are you active company no i am still sir inactive company i am still inactive company clear then sir what does authorized capital nominal capital means sir authorized capital or nominal capital means it is a maximum amount of the capital Authorized capital or nominal capital is the maximum amount of share capital of the company as it is authorized by the MAUA of the company. It is the maximum capital. Then, books of accounts include details of income and expenses, details of purchase and sales, details of assets and liabilities, and cost records. Books of accounts include four things income and expenses, purchase and sales, assets and liabilities, and cost records. Very important definition of net worth. It came in the paper May 23. Net worth, you should remember net worth. So, it can come in MCQ again. How do you calculate net worth of paid up share capital? Add free reserves, add securities premium, add credit balance in PNL. So paid up share capital, add free reserves, add sec premium, add credit balance in PNL. Minus accumulated losses, minus default expenses, minus miscellaneous expenses, not return off. Miscellaneous expenses, not return off. So paid up share capital, add free reserves, add sec premium, add credit balance in PNL. Minus accumulated losses, minus default expenses, minus miscellaneous expenses, not return off. You will get the net worth graphic. Very important definition. You can write exactly in this form in the exam, but if it comes in the calculation, you have to calculate it. Then, question number 11. Sir, explain what is financial year. Generally, in India, we follow April to March. April to March. But, sir, what if the company is incorporated in October? So, April to March will not come. Na? October to March will come. So, what if the company is incorporated in December? Then, December to March will come for the first financial year. Sir, what if it is incorporated in Feb? So, Feb to March will come in the first year. Then, second year almost, it will be April to March. So, to have that problem, to overcome that problem, government have said, if the company is incorporated before 1st Jan, that means till 31st December, till 31st December, then the financial year end would will, will on, end on coming 31st March, then the financial year would end on the coming 31st March. For example, if the company is incorporated 2nd June 23, 2nd June 23, that is before 1st Jan, right? Then the financial year will start from 2nd June 23 to 31st March 24, like coming 31st March. So, if the company is incorporated on or after 1st Jan, on or after 1st Jan, like on 5th January 24. So we have coming 31st March. So financial year would not end on the coming 31st March. It would end on the next uh, next 31st March. Next 31st March. Then the financial year would end on the next year's 31st March. That means from 5th Jan 24 to 31st March 25. So here this is basically around 9 months 31st. I mean 9 months financial year. Here it will be around 15 months financial year. So this is a problem only for the first financial year. From year to year we will have April to March, April to March. Only for the first year you have to see this. So, where a company is a holding company or a subsidiary company or associate company of a company which is incorporated outside India, like foreign company ka holding is in India or subsidiary or associate is in India and they are required to follow a different financial year for the purpose of consolidation for doing for doing CFS. Then such company shall apply to CG, such company shall apply to CG and the CG may allow any period as its financial year whether or not such period is a year. Like in UK, they follow Jan to December. India, we follow April to March. Some countries follow 10 months ka financial year. We do not know. So, 10 months, whether it's a year or not, still it will be considered financial year. MCQ, they have to apply to CG. They have to apply to CG. Okay.
रीड दिस डेफिनेशन इंपॉर्टेंट डेफिनेशन क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन रीड डन डन देन क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व से इज एक्सप्लेन ऑफिसर इन डिफॉल्ट ओ आई डी एक्सप्लेन ऑफिसर इन डिफॉल्ट इट कैन कम ऑल्सो एज अ डिस्क्रिप्टिव आंसर प्लस टू आइडेंटिफाइन एम सी क्यू सर ओ आई डी मीन्स इधर अ होल्ड टाइम डिरेक्टर और अ के एम पी इफ के एम पी इज नॉट देर देन एनी डिरेक्टर हु इज ऑथराइज फर्स्ट होल्ड टाइम डिरेक्टर नंबर टू के एम पी इफ के एम पी इज नॉट देर देन एनी डिरेक्टर हु इज ऑथराइज If no such director is authorized, then all the directors. This is very important. These three points are very important. Whole time director, KMP. If KMP is not there, then authorized director. If such no authorization is not there, if no authorization is there, then all the directors. Then any person under immediate authority of the board or KMP. Then any person under the immediate authority of the board or KMP. Then any person on whose instruction, direction, advice the board is accustomed to act. Ha. If chartered accountant, company secretary. Or cost accountant lawyers given the advice in professional capacity, they are not officer in default because they give advice in professional capacity. Okay, if a, a normal director is giving ad, instructions, advice, then he is a officer in default. Then every director, then every director, then in respect of shares transfer agent, registrar and share merchant. I mean merchant banker. In respect of shares, share transfer agent, registrar and merchant banker. Cool. then babu
वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जाम क्वेश्चन नवंबर ट्वेंटी टू लिस्टेड कंपनी अ कंपनी बिच हैज एनी ऑफ इट सिक्योर्ड इज लिस्टेड ऑन एनी ऑन एनी रिकॉग्नाइज स्टॉक एक्शन इन इज अ लिस्टेड कंपनी रिकॉग्नाइज स्टॉक एक्शन इन इंडिया इज ओली टू बी एस एन एस ई देर आर मेनी स्टॉक एक्शन लाइक अहमदाबाद मेड्रास कैलकटा चंडीगढ़ राजकोट बट रिकॉग्नाइज ओली टू बी एस सी एन एस ई अ कंपनी बिच हैज एनी ऑफ इट सिक्योर्ड इज लिस्टेड ऑन रिकॉग्नाइज स्टॉक एक्शन इज अ लिस्टेड कंपनी हावे वर फॉलोइंग कैन नॉट बी अ लिस्टेड कंपनी फॉलोइंग कैन नॉट बी लिस्टेड कंपनी अ पब्लिक कंपनी अ पब्लिक कंपनी विच हैव नॉट लिस्टेड देर इक्विटी शेयर पब्लिक कंपनी विच हैव नॉट लिस्टेड देर इक्विटी शेयर बट लिस्टेड देर वॉट इफ यू सी दे वर्ड नॉन कन्वर्टेबल डेट सिक्योरिटीज इशूड ऑन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट और नॉन कन्वर्टेबल रिडिमल प्रिफेंशियल इशूड ऑन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट इफ यू सी दे वर्ड नॉन कन्वर्टेबल एंड प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट नॉट अ लिस्टेड कंपनी नॉट अ लिस्टेड कंपनी सो प्राइवेट कंपनी विच हैव लिस्टेड नॉन कन्वर्टेबल डेट सिक्योरिटी ऑन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट बेसिस अगेन नॉन कन्वर्टेबल प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट देन पब्लिक कंपनीज विच हैव लिस्टेड देर इक्विटी शेयर विच हैव नॉट लिस्टेड इक्विटी ऑन आर एस सी आर एस सी मीन रिकॉग्नाइज स्टॉक एक्सचेंज सॉरी बट लिस्टेड ऑन अदर स्टॉक एक्सचेंज लाइक अहमदाबाद राजकोट सो स्टिल इट इज नॉट अ लिस्टेड कंपनी सो दिस टॉक्स अबाउट पब्लिक कंपनी दिस टॉक्स अबाउट पब्लिक कंपनी पॉइंट नंबर टू टॉक्स अबाउट प्राइवेट कंपनी पॉइंट नंबर टू टॉक्स अबाउट प्राइवेट कंपनी सो फॉलोइंग कैन नॉट बी लिस्टेड कंपनी पब्लिक कंपनी विच हैव नॉट लिस्टेड देर इक्विटी शेयर ऑन आर एस सी ओके बट लिस्टेड अबाउट देर नॉन कन्वर्ट नॉन कन्वर्ट डेट सिक्योरिटीज और रिडिमेबल प्रेफरेंसेज ऑन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट बेसिस पब्लिक कंपनी विच हैव नॉट लिस्टेड देर इक्विटी शेयर बट ऑन आर एस सी बट लिस्टेड ऑन अदर स्टॉक एक्सचेंज प्राइवेट कंपनी विच हैव लिस्टेड देर नॉन कन्वर्टेबल डेट सिक्योरिटीज ऑन प्राइवेट प्लेसमेंट बेसिस अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज लिस्टेड कंपनी kindly read the definition very important definition then what is the procedure for conversion of public company into private company and vice versa public to private that means from a big company we are becoming small company sir or small to big both the procedure is same if you see both the procedure is same so from a section number is 14 section number is guys 14 private company to public company so board will call a board meeting and pass br here also same point board will call a board meeting and pass br A general meeting would be called. SR would be passed. SR would be passed. From a private to public, I mean, from a small to big, we are becoming. Increase the member to seven. Increase the member director to three. Delete the word private limited. Add the word limited and delete TRP. Here, this two point will not come. Add private limited. Add private limited and delete the word limited. 
and here you will add TRP. Then here also CG will give the approval, CG will give the approval. Then same point, SR copy, CG approval ka copy, altered MAMA should be sent to ROC within 15 days. Very important MCQ within 15 days. ROC will check and will issue koi that all legal formalities have been complied with. All legal formalities have been complied with. Understood this much? So do it again. Either of it can they ask and uh, section number is 14, 14 of Companies Act Done? Then, so question number 15, explain section 8 company or a licensed company, that's NPO basically. So generally every company is registered with the word private limited or limited. But section 8 gives a power to CG, 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 CG will give the license to NPOs to be registered without the word private limited or limited. So who will give the license? CG will give the license. Then. NPO should have the following objectives that is promotion of commerce, arts, science, charity or any other useful objects and they can earn profit, they can definitely earn profit but the profit should not be distributed as a dividend to the members. It should be applied for the same purpose, it should be applied for the purpose. So income should be applied for promoting the object and not for payment of dividend. Then NPO can alter the object clause or register of its clause only with the approval of CG. If NPO does not follow the objectives, license will be revoked that means it will be cancelled and CG will give the, uh, before cancelling, CG will give the opportunity of being heard. CG can also pass an order for amalgamation of Section 8 company with another Section 8 company. So Section 8 getting amalgamated with another Section company having bits or company having similar or same objects. If on winding up any assets are sold and after paying all the library surpluses left, the process will be credited to Insolvency Bankruptcy Fund formed under IBC 2016. So they can amalgamate with any another Section 8 company having similar object. If the uh, on winding of a section 8 company assets are sold and any surplus is left to after paying off the liability, whatever excess is there, 
what they can do they can will transfer it to insolvency bankruptcy fund under ibc 2016 ibc means insolvency bankruptcy code 2016 then if any provision is contravened company is liable for 10 lakhs to 1 crore officers liable for 25000 to 25 lakh if you can remember remember this matter or you can skip it okay plus if the affairs of company are conducted fraudulently then every officer will also be liable under section 447 liable under section 447 section 8 company then procedure for registering section 8 company you will just refer to the book okay and people who have studied from a model from any other author book it's a procedure so they can ask you a case like the mr ram he wants to incorporate section 8 company what is the procedure okay all the documents should be submitted plus sec definition plus the object wala point write it in your own words question number 70 service of document section number 20 a document may be served on roc or member by sending it to him by post register post speed post courier or electronic mode if a company wants to serve document to the member or if a company wants to submit any document to the roc or vice versa roc want to submit some document to the company he can serve by post register post speed post electronic mode okay now for example there's a member rahul he has given he said that please send me the document by blue dot courier so sir rahul will give the money so company it is your duty to send the document by blue dot courier only so the question have been asked in this uh, on this concept right? if a member has requested for delivery of any document through a particular mode for which he shall pay such fees as may be determined by the company and its agm then the company is bound then the company is bound to serve him such by such mode otherwise service will not be deemed to have been served okay section number 20 service of document read this point number 2 is important in this then then explain entrenchment sir entrenchment means what generally in a company if they want to alter awa it can be done by sr but company x says i have 100 rules uh, if a company says i have 100 rules in my awa i want to alt put uh, some more conditions on rule number 5 10 15 so rule number 5 10 15 will be altered only by 90% approval generally all the uh, rules can be altered by sr that means 75% approval but rule number 5 rule number 10 rule number 15 a company says i want to put more restrictive conditions so that putting more restrictive conditions is called as entrenchment it's called as entrenchment okay article of a company may contain provision for entrenchment to this effect that articles can be altered only if more restrictive conditions than a sr are met sr means 75% we want to put 80% 85% 90% babu yeah 
provision for entrenchment shall be made either on the formation of a company when the company is incorporated or by amendment in the articles. See, either it will be from the inception right from the incorporation or you can amend the articles later on. In case of a private company, all members' ka approval is required. All members means 100%. In case of a public company, SR is required. Guys, it is not doing the transaction. It is for putting entrenchment in the articles that we will alter the articles only by having 80% approval. So to do this thing, either it should be uh, applicable from formation, but at the inception, we have not added this provision of entrenchment. We want to add now. To add entrenchment, in case of a private company, we require 100% approval. Then the transaction will be done by like 90% approval. To add entrenchment, it is 100% approval. And to do the transaction, whatever company says, 86%, 79%, 30%, sorry, 95%, 93%, whatever they want to put. In case of a public company, SR is required. In case of public company, SR is required. To add entrenchment, the transaction will be done whatever the company has thought. Maybe 80%, 85%, 90%. That is more than SR. To add article, to add entrenchment in the articles, either it is formation or by amendment in the articles. In case of a private company, by all members. In case of a public company, by SR. If articles contain provision for entrenchment, entrenchment, company shall give notice to the ROC. Company shall give notice to ROC. Cool. Last question, question number 19, OPC. In OPC, there can be minimum one member, maximum one member, that is only one member. OPC can have more than one director. Member can be only one. The member of OPC shall indicate the name of nominee who in the event of subscriber's death or his incapacity shall become the member of the company. The nominee shall give his uh, prior return. Re return ka spelling is wrong. It is written consent which can also be withdrawn by the nominee. The members of OPC may also change any time its nominee by giving a notice to the company that I want to change my nominee and the company shall intimate the same to the ROC. Such change shall not be deemed to be alteration of power. It can come in MCQ. Generally, if you are changing the uh, name clause, object clause, it is an alteration. But if you are changing the nominee, it is nomination clause is getting changed, but it will not be deemed to be alteration of MAUA. Only a natural person who is an Indian citizen, whether resident in India or otherwise, can become, can incorporate a OPC or can become the nominee for the sole member of OPC. Sole ka spelling is SOLE, sole member of OPC. A person can be a member of one OPC at any point of time and the said person shall also be a nominee of one OPC. So one member, one nominee. I can become a member of one OPC and one uh, OPC I can become a nominee. One OPC I can become a member, one OPC I can become a nominee. No minor shall become a member or nominee of OPC. Or he can hold any beneficial shares with beneficial interest. He can't hold any beneficial shares also. Okay, such OPC cannot enter into the business of non-banking, financial investment activities, including investment in secrets of any body corporate. So they can't do non-banking business. They can't do any investment activities. Such OPC cannot be converted into Section 8 company. Such OPC cannot be converted into Section 8 company also. Small company ka definition and OPC ka answer. Both are very important for your attempt. Please concentrate and revise. Okay. Read now. Read.
डन सो मिनिमम फोर मार्क टू एट मार्क चैप्टर डेफिनेशन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओपीसी स्मॉल कंपनी प्लीज कॉन्सेंट ऑन दिस टू आंसर्स इट कैन कम इन द एग्जाम रूम कूल बाय गाइज टेक कैन एंजॉय एम फॉर रैंक और सेवेंटी प्लस विच एवेज अलियर आई थैंक भार्गव फॉर सच वंडरफुल नोट्स एंड एवरीबडी वर रिटर्न द नोट्स इन द क्लास काइंडली रिवाइज विद योर ओन हैंड राइटिंग इट विल बी वेरी यूजफुल टू यू गाइज बाय टेक केयर Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to the class. So we are doing now incorporation of a company. Okay, incorporation of a company is a very uh, simple unit. Lot of uh, provisions are there which we need to remember. My first question says define promoters and their right to receive remuneration. Define promoters and the right to receive remuneration. So what does a promoter means? Promoter means a person who has been named as a promoter where either in the prospectus or annual return or who has a control over the affairs of the company as a shareholder or a director or otherwise or on whose advice instructions or direction the board of directors are accustomed to act he is called as a promoter promoter means a person who has been named as a promoter in the prospectus or annual return or who has been who has a control over the affairs of a company as a shareholder director or otherwise or on whose advice directions or instruction the board is accustomed to act he is called as a promoter now sir promoter is not the agent of a company since the company is not into existence acha promoter is uh law says if you are a promoter it is not mandatory that you should be a subscriber and eventually the director it is not mandatory but at least one promoter should be the director he should not make he should not make a secret profit that is he should give full and fair disclosure of such profit to the board if he makes secret secret profit then company can recover from the promoters sir he can't make a he, he can make a profit but he cannot make a secret profit if he is making a secret profit then he the company can recover it from the promoters Promoters do not have a right to receive any remuneration or recover any expenses. Even if the AWA provides for payment of such payment, uh, even if the AWA provides for such payment, it is not binding on the company. It is not binding on the company. However, com if company wants to give remuneration, it can pay in following ways. How? By issue of shares at discount, by lump sum remuneration, or on purchase of property by the company, or commission on the shares sold by the promoters. Issue uh, issuing shares at discount, lump sum remuneration, commission on the purchase of property, commission on the shares sold by the promoters. So it's a short note on promoters. They can ask you a direct answer. Definition also they have asked twice in the exam. Again, it can come. Read promoter. Done. Then, 
Sir, what are the documents to be filed with ROC at the time of incorporation? A direct question it can come in the exam. Mawa obviously. Owa. Mawa owa. Number three. Declaration from each subscribers and the first director. Declaration from each subscribers and the first director stating that they are not convicted for any offense. Offense the spelling is wrong. It's O F F E N C E. Regarding the promotion, formation, management of a company, he is not found guilty of breach of trust in the last five years. And all the documents which are filed with ROC are true and correct. And true and correct. So they will give the declaration. Private company may two subscribers are there. Public company may seven subscribers are are there. Then any the address for corresponding until that the register office is established. Fifth. Particulars of every subscribers like the name, address, nationality, etc. Particulars of every subscribers like the name, address, nationality, etc. Then particulars of the person mentioned as first directors of the company. Particulars of interest of person mentioned as the first directors. So particulars of the person mentioned first director. Particulars of the interest of person mentioned as first directors. Then a company shall within thirty days of incorporation, within thirty days of incorporation, within thirty days of incorporation shall at all time have a register office for receiving and acknowledging all the commission notices as may be addressed to it. So it is not mandatory that at the time of incorporation, company should have a registered office. Once the company is incorporated, within thirty days they should have a registered office. So they can ask you separately on this question: What is a registered office? What is the use? And when do you when should you should have? We should have it within thirty days of incorporation for receiving and acknowledging all the communications. So eight points are there, guys. So they can ask you a question, Mr. Ram. He wants to incorporate a company. You are a chartered accountant. Uh, he wants to understand what documents should be attached to uh, while incorporating the company. So all eight points you need to know. Read. Done. Question number three. Explain commencement of business section number ten a. So if a company is incorporated, having share capital, they cannot commence the business unless two conditions are satisfied. A company incorporated with a share capital shall not commence business or execute borrowing power. That means they can't take even a loan. So you can't do the business or you can't take a loan unless unless a declaration is filed by the director within one eighty days. A declaration is filed by the director within one eighty days stating to the ROC that. 
that every subscriber has paid the value of share which is agreed to be taken by them as per MOVA and company has filed this declaration and company has filed a declaration with ROC or verification of his register office as per section 122. He will state, a director will state in a declaration within 180 days, every subscriber within 180 days and every subscriber has paid the value of share which was agreed to be taken by him and verification of register office is done as per 122. Then, if a company has defaulted in section 10A, then company is liable for 50,000, officer 1000 per day, subject to maximum 1 lakh. If a company has defaulted in section 10A, then the company is liable for 50,000 and officer is liable for 1000 per day and subject to maximum of 1 lakh. Then, if the declaration is not filed within 180 days and ROC has a reasonable cause to believe that the company is not carrying on any business or operation, then he may remove the name of a company from the register of company. If the declaration is not filed and ROC believes that the company is not carrying any business, then he may remove the name of a company from the register of company, from the register of companies. Cool. 1, 2, 3. Read point number 3. Done? Then, question number 4. What is the penalty for submitting false information while incorporating a company? If any person furnishes false or incorrect information while incorporating a company or if the company is incorporated and later on it is proved that, that they have submitted false or untrue information, then all the subscribers or the false directors who are guilty shall be liable under section 447. Then all the subscribers or first directors who are guilty shall be liable under section 447. If a company is incorporated by submitting false information, then the tribunal on an application submitted to it may pass following order. So penalty though you will be liable plus they can pass following order. What other orders can be filed by the uh, can be passed by the tribunal? They may the tribunal may pass order for regulating the management or changes in Mawa for public interest. 
direct that the liability of the member shall be unlimited direct the removal of the name of the company uh, from the register of companies roc means here register of companies pass an order for winding up and pass such order as it may deem fit regulating the management uh, regulation of the management changes in mawa or awa for public interest then direct the liability of the member shall be unlimited direct the removal of the name of company from the register of company pass an order for winding up and pass such order as it may deem fit twice they have asked this question also do it again punishment for submitting false information while incorporating a company then what is pre incorporation contract any contract entered prior to the date of incorporation what will you say any contract entered prior to the incorporation is called as pre incorporation contract these are entered by the promoters on behalf of the company these are entered by the promoters on behalf of the company they are entered before incorporation these contracts are void with respect to the company company cannot ratify pre incorporation contract as the company was never in existence however company can adopt that is company can go for novation novation that is if the company adopts company is liable if the company does not adopt then the promoters would be personally liable company is not liable company is not liable it is entered by the promoters it has wide respect to the company it is entered before incorporation company cannot ratify however company can go for novation if company adopts company is liable if company does not adopt promoters will be personally liable cool then next answer is your illegal association section number is 464 it says any person or association or partnership doing any business with more than 50% any association or partnership doing any business with more than 50% shall convert itself into a company else it will be illegal association else it will be illegal association what are the effect every member would be liable for penalty of 1 lakh rupees members would be personally liable for all the debts of such business association cannot enter into any contract on its own name and even a subsequent reduction cannot make it legal once illegal always illegal we have done this once illegal always illegal but there are certain exception to it number 1 association of partnership formed by the professional like cacca cma association of partnership formed by professional governed by special like cacca cma you can have more than 60 members 100 members 200 members 300 members it's allowed more than 50% you can have and one hua sir one hua means only one hua only one hua that is combining major male and female members in question if minor is given you have to exclude it one male i mean major members and female members if it is only one hua of doing uh, uh, doing business more than 50% it is allowed if my hua and assume shahrukh khan ka hua we both hua mixed together 
my HR, 45 people, Shah Rukh Khan HR, 7 people, 52 people doing business together, not allowed sir, maximum 50 is allowed and it is illegal, Shah Rukh Khan says sir, I will remove 3 members, no sir, once illegal, always illegal, once illegal, always illegal, okay, revised illegal association, section 464. Then, question number 7, it says binding force of Mahuva and Ahuva, binding force of Mahuva and Ahuva, section number kya sir, section number is 10. Sir, company is bound to its members, that for all the rights, if the rights are deprived, member can sue the company. Member is bound to the company, to pay the call ka money, if money is not paid, company can sue the member. Members bound inter se, inter se means with each other, I N T E R S E inter se. Members can enforce his right against another member through the company but not directly. So, member member is not in relation. Member company, company member. Is company bound to the outsider on the basis of MOVA? The answer is no. Outsider cannot establish a contract only on the basis of MOVA. However, if he proves a contract which is independent of MOVA, then the third party can sue the company, that is, company will be liable. So, if the article says, I will appoint Rakhi Savan, Rakhi Savan is a lady of Bollywood, I can appoint Rakhi Savan as my lawyer and we have removed her. Due to no fault of her. Can she sue the company? No. Because company is not bound to the outsider on the basis of AWA. But yes, if uh, Rakhi Savan and the company has an independent contract, then and the company is removed because due to no fault of her, then Rakhi Savan can sue the company. If there is a contract which is independent of AWA, then the third party can sue the company, that is, company will be liable. Understood binding force of AWA. Then, sir, doctrines. So we have three doctrines. So, doctrine of ultra-virus, doctrine of constructive notice and doctrine of indoor management. Doctrine of ultra-virus, doctrine of constructive notice and doctrine of indoor management. The case ka name is Ashbury Railway Carriage and Iron Company Limited vs. Ritchie. Number 2, Kotla Venkato Swami vs. Ram Murthy. Number 3, Royal British Bank vs. Turquoise. Royal British Bank vs. Turquoise. Royal British Bank vs. Turquoise. Okay. First, so what is doctrine of ultra-virus? It means beyond the power of company. An act is said to be ultra virus if it is not permitted as per Companies Act, falls outside the object clause of MOVA and it is not incidental or ancillary to the main object, to the attainment of main object. 
so what are its effect it is void ab initio directors will be personally liable third party can sue the directors for breach of laws it cannot be ratified this uh, the third party can in, obtain injunction order injunction order means a stay order from the court that is stopping the person from proceeding with what he was doing it an act can be legally exempt if you want to do that you can do it only by altering the object clause of mawa for example if my object says i want to sell vada pav so i can sell vada pav sir but i am selling chutney allowed sir even if it is not written allowed because it is incidental if i want to sell this pencil sir not allowed if you want because it is ultra wireless if it is void ab initio if you want to sell this pencil you can sell it by altering the object clause of mawa everything should be written in your object clause of mawa okay so first let me read all the three doctrines then you will re, uh, recall all the three doctrines okay number 2 constructive notice law says if third party you are dealing with a company it is your duty to read mawa wa you, your duty is not only to read but also to understand the mawa and awa that means third party whenever you are contracting with a company we will take always an assumption that you have read the mawa and you have understood the mawa wa if you have not read and you are dealing with a company and if any liability has occurred company will not be liable this doctrine protect the company this doctrine protects the company the exception to this doctrine is the doctrine of indoor management which will protect the outsider sir so, company shall mandatorily file mawa and awa once filed it becomes the public document a public document this doctrine operates in the favor of company third party is required to appraise himself with the contents of mawa awa before contracting with the company it is assumed that the third party have read and understood the contents of mawa awa if he does not have actual notice he is deemed to have a constructive notice implied notice the only exception to this doctrine is the doctrine of indoor management it is what doctrine of indoor management doctrine of indoor management then third doctrine of indoor management so outsider ka duty was to read mawa wa he read mawa wa but if there is some internal irregularity in the company then company it is your problem third party is never put to loss third party is never put to loss any outsider dealing with the company is entitled to assume that the internal management was done regularly when third party enters into a contract with any director or office of a company if there is some irregularity in the internal proceeding the contract would be still valid and enforceable against the company it will be valid and enforceable against the company the third party is only required to be satisfied that the contract is within the scope of mawa wa he did not inquire into the internal management of the company see there is a corporate bill outsider anyways can see so company you are responsible for your internal irregularity so what is exception to doin the code is frisk f forgery r knowledge of internal irregularity i illegal transaction s suspicious transactions or suspicious circumstances k no knowledge of awa in frisk there is no protection to the third party like if third party has knowledge a uh, third party has knowledge about the indoor management still you are getting into the contract then you are liable if i have not read mawa wa only then sir third party it will this doctrine will not protect you because the basic rule of this doctrine is that you should read mawa wa understand all the three doctrines and with this one more chapter is over cool so what you will do you will just read all the three doctrines again giving you 5 minutes time i will just scroll the answer you read it from the notes read
ba bô bảy hi guys what's up so today we are starting with a chapter called as meetings and general so people who have studied from different teacher you will find this chapter uh, in the module as meetings management and administration in my book we have noted as two units meetings and general so the section starts from 96 and it goes to 119 so it is 96 to 119 okay let's start with meetings concept so guys meetings are of two kinds one is the member committee other one is board committee when we talk about board committee it is basically board of directors committee you will find this content in ca final now when you talk about members committee sir it is basically general meeting so it is annual general meeting or extraordinary general meeting either annual general meeting or extraordinary general meeting now question number 1 says section 96 to 99 it says annual general meeting sir annual general meeting it is about first annual general meeting so first annual general meeting means the company is incorporated and the first general meeting they will have it is called first agm okay it should be held within 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 9 months from the close of the first financial year within 9 months from the close of the first financial year that means during the year whenever you have incorporated in april in june in october in november in december and whenever you have incorporated it says within 9 months from the close of the first financial year so go to 31st march from there you will count within 9 months that is till 31st december so 31st december is your due date ROC cannot give any extension. If 31st December like you have not conducted the meeting, you have contravened section 96. You have contravened section 96. Sir, so subsequent AGM. There are three conditions. It should be conducted every year. Number two, max bit gap between two AGM. Max gap between two AGM can be can be 15 months, and and max gap between year ending and date of ensuing AGM, upcoming AGM can be six months. Every year, max gap between two AGMs can be fifteen months, and max gap between year ending and date of ensuing AGM can be six months. ROC can, however, give three months extension. If the question is silent, never ever assume that ROC has given the extension. Never ever assume. Now, as per section ninety-seven, as per section ninety-seven, if there is a default in calling AGM, what will happen? The tribunal will come into the picture on an application by any member of the company will call the AGM and give such directions as the tribunal may deem fit. So, as per section ninety seven, what will happen if the company has not conducted the AGM? The tribunal will call the AGM. Now, the direction will also include that one member or in person or a proxy shall be a valid quorum. Tribunal is the godfather. He will say that if it is attended by one person, person is not coming, proxy is coming, still it will be a valid quorum. A general meeting held as above shall be deemed to be the AGM of the company. It will be assumed it is an AGM of the company. Ninety six was the provision. Ninety seven was the tribunal ka power. Ninety eight AGM. If it is EGM, okay. If a general meeting cannot be held due to any reason, the tribunal will either sue moto or an application by a director or a member shall call the EGM and give same answer and give such directions as the tribunal may deem fit. The direction will also include that one member in person or proxy may constitute a valid quorum. So same point for EGM also. A general meeting held as above shall be deemed to be the EGM of the company. So tribunal in both the cases, if AGM is co not called, tribunal will call it. If AGM is not called, tribunal can call it. Okay, and it will be assumed that it is the AGM or EGM. So 96, 97, 98, 99 is your penalty. If 96, 97, 98 is contravened, then company and the officer will be liable for up to one lakh important penalty, up to one lakh and and five thousand rupees per day till the default continues and five thousand rupees per day till the default continues, up to one lakh rupees and five thousand rupees per day till the default continues. And few important provision. AGM should be held during the business hours. That is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is our business hours in MCQ. They can ask you. It should be held within business hours. That is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. If AGM cannot be can, can be held, AGM can be held on any day other than national holiday. 26 January, 15 August, 2 August, or uh, 2 October, 2 October, 2 October. AGM can be on any day other than other than national holiday. What is a national holiday? A national holiday means a uh, national holiday which has been declared as a national holiday by a By central government, by central government. Now it can be held either at the register office or any other place in the same city, town, village. AGM should be held at the register office or any other place in the same city, town, or village. However, AGM of an unlisted company may be held at any time in India. May be held at any place in India if the consent is given by all the members in elect writing or electoral mode in advance. Generally, AGM should be held. Generally, AGM should be held when. Sir, AGM should be held on any day other than a national holiday, and it can be held either at the register office or 
एनी अदर प्लेस इन द सेम सिटी टाउन विलेज दिस इज द एजीएम का प्रोविजन बट फॉर अनलिस्टेड कंपनी एजीएम कैन बी हेल्ड एनी वेयर इन इंडिया प्रोवाइडेड कंसेंट इज गिवन बाय ऑल मेंबर्स ऑल मेंबर्स मींस 100% अप्रूवल 100% अप्रूवल सो इट कैन कम इन एमसीक्यू द वर्ड इज अनलिस्टेड अ अनलिस्टेड कंपनी नाउ सर एजीएम सेक्शन नंबर इज 100 तो 96 96 98 99 इज ऑल ऑन एजीएम 100 इज एजीएम इट कैन बी कॉल्ड बाय द बोर्ड और बाय द मेंबर्स और बाय द ट्राइब्यूनल इट कैन बी कॉल्ड बाय द बोर्ड और द मेंबर्स और ट्राइब्यूनल Sir, what about the members? In case of a company having share capital, how many members can request members holding minimum one tenth of paid-up share capital? Members holding minimum one tenth of paid-up share capital. In case of guarantee company, members holding one tenth of voting powers. Members having one tenth of voting power, they can request to call the EGM. Okay, if members have request to the board, that please call the EGM. They will call the EGM within twenty one days of the request. Within twenty one of days of the request, at the most they can call up to forty five days. So within twenty one days, up to forty five days. If it is not called or not held, then members will themselves hold the meeting within within three months from the date of request. Within three months of date of request means effectively it is forty five days only. Generally they will be giving to the board a request. Can please call the EGM. Board will call within twenty one days. Conduct the meeting within forty or the total forty five days. If they have not called or they have not held the EGM, then members will have a power to call the EGM themselves within within three months from the date of request. So three months from the date of request means effectively it is forty five because first forty five will wait that board will call board will call, right? Now if you members have called the EGM, any reasonable expenses incurred by requisitionist shall be reimbursed to them by the company. So if imagine board have not called. so you will conduct the meeting imagine at taj hotel you have conducted the meeting so whatever expenses is there you can reimburse by the company i mean you can take the reimbursement from the company and the company shall deduct the same from the remuneration payable to the director who has defaulted in call, calling the egm so because it was a director's call duty they have not called it so company will pay to the requisitioner but it is a loss to the company they will recover it from the director's call remuneration okay now egm can be held on any day except national holiday during business hours business hours are 9 am to 6 am And and anywhere in India, anywhere in India, guys. AGM uh, either at the register office or the same city, same town, same village. But uh, for unlisted company, you can hire at anywhere in India. Provide consent of hundred percent members are taken. Consent of hundred percent members are taken. Here, AGM can be held directly anywhere in India. If it is a wholly owned subsidiary of a company incorporated outside India. If it is a India company is a subsidiary, wholly owned subsidiary, holding company is foreign, foreign. Then the EGM can be held even outside India. Then the EGM of such subsidiary can also be held outside India. It's logical, na? Holding company is outside India. Sub uh, subsidiary is in India, and it's a wholly owned subsidiary, wholly owned, hundred percent stake. So if this company is calling the EGM, they will call the members. Where are the members? Sir, all are outside India. So why to work conduct meeting in India? So there they have given a benefit. If you are a wholly owned subsidiary of a foreign company in corporate outside India. If you are a wholly owned subsidiary of a company incorporated outside India, the EGM can be held even outside India because that's logical, na? Now, length of notice, length of notice, how long? How long? So a general meeting shall be called by giving 21 days clear notice. 21 days clear notice. For calculation of uh, 21 days, follow the following: date of sending notice one day. Plus twenty one days, twenty two days. Plus two days of post, twenty four days. So twenty four days a gap should be ideally there. The twenty fifth day should be the date of meeting. Twenty fifth day should be the date of meeting. Okay, so one day that is date of sending notice plus twenty one days, twenty two plus two days of post twenty four. Um, then twenty fifth day is the date of meeting. Then receipt or non receipt of notice is immaterial. What does the provision says? Receipt or non receipt of notice is immaterial. Company should have a proof that they have sent the sent the notice. Okay. Now shorter notice generally it says there should be gap of twenty four days. And twenty fifth day should be the date of meeting, not earlier than that. Twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, twenty eighth, twenty ninth, thirty. You can have later, but not earlier than that. But for MCQ, you will write twenty one clear days. For calculation, it is twenty fifth you will take. But for uh, MCQ, it is twenty one clear days. Sir, shorter notice is valid if it is considered by in case of AGM members holding ninety five percent of the paid up share capital carrying voting rights. For AGM members holding ninety five percent, they should agree that acha keep fifteen days a gap. We will come for the AGM. But sir, for EGM, for EGM, in case of a company having share capital, majority number and members holding ninety five percent of paid up share capital carrying voting rights, majority number and member holding ninety five percent of paid up share capital carrying voting rights, in case of a guarantee company, that is company not having share capital, members holding ninety five percent of voting power, members holding ninety five percent of voting power. 
So 95 percent approval is required in simple words. That uh, keep seven days can notice, ten days can notice, because you are keeping shorter days can notice. So these people should agree. These people should agree. Then, so notice should be sent to Malti. I have written refer section 136 notes accounts of company Malti members auditors uh, official assignee legal rep of uh, legal representative of deceased member TC trustee of debenture holders Malti. The notice should contain the place, date, time of the meeting and the business to be transacted that is agenda. The director or secretary must be authorized by the board to send the notice. Secretary cannot call the note cannot call the meeting on her own. Director or the secretary must be authorized by the board to call the meeting. If omission to send this notice is willful, then the notice is inv invalid. Meeting is also invalid. However, if it is accidental or by mistake, I forgot to send, then the meeting is also valid and the notice is also valid. In the question, always assume it is accidental omission. Always assume it is accidental omission. Clear? 96 to 99 was AGM, 100 was EGM, 101 was length of notice. Now 102, two business. What will you say? 102, two business. Sir, at the AGM, there are all the only ordinary business. At the AGM, there are special business. A ordinary business is conducted at the AGM and all the business transacted at the AGM is called a special business. Sir, ordinary business is ADDA. A. Adoption of accounts, audit report, board report. Adoption of accounts, audit report, board report. D. Declaration of dividend. One more D. Appointment of directors and fixing their remuneration. A. Appointment of auditors and fixing their remuneration. Sir, special business. Any business other than ADDA. Any business other than ADDA. That means any business other than ordinary business will give you special business. Will give you special business. Sir, for ordinary business, we require ordinary resolution. For ordinary business, we require ordinary resolution. That means more than 50% people should say yes. Achha, special business, sir. It can be conducted by OR also. It can be conducted by SR also. For SR, we require 75% approval. For SR, we require 75% approval. Clear? Now, section number is 102, two business. Resolutions are written in 114. Resolutions are written in 114. Then, if any item of special business is to be transacted at the meeting of the company, an explanatory statement should be annexed to the notice. It shall disclose the interest of every promoter, director, manager and KMP. That explanatory statement should contain everything, everything, including the interest of the director, promoter, manager, KMP. KMP means key manager person in the other company and if it is more than 2% of the paid up share capital of that other company. Sir, interest means what? If someone has bought shares of how much? More than 2% in another company. That should be disclosed. That should be disclosed. So, it says AB Limited is buying a machinery with Baby Limited. So, for that we require SR in SR. So, SR will be heading, uh, we will be passing at EGM. If AB plus other director is holding more than 2% in Baby Limited, if AB plus other directors holding more than 2% in Baby Limited, then AB would be called as interested directors. AB would be also called, another director would also be called what? Interested director, more than 2%. Cool? In case of non-disclosure or insufficient disclosure, it has come in the exam, huh? what is the uh, penalty? I mean, what are the provisions? In case of non-disclosure, insufficient disclosure, what will happen? The directors, manager, promoters, KMP shall be liable for penalty. So, what should be disclosed? This came as an exam question. Following shall be disclosed in the notice. The nature of concern or interest, financial or otherwise, of every director, KMP, manager and the relatives or any other information the facts that may enable the member to understand the meaning, scope and implication of the items of business to take decision thereon. So, this thing should be disclosed when a director is interested, where it should be disclosed in the explanatory statement attached to the notice of EGM attached to the notice of EGM because with every notice of EGM explanatory statement will be going. In explanatory statement you have to give every disclosure. This is 102. Two. Okay. 103. 103 is guys quorum. 103 is quorum. So, for private company it is minimum 2. For public it is 5, 15, uh, 5, 15 30. Sir, 0 to 1000 basically it is 1 to 1000. Okay. Not 1 to 2 to 1000 you will say. No, sorry, 7 to 1000 because it's a public company, na, public company. So, just to remember, 0 to 1000, 1001 to 5000, 5001 and above. 0 to 1000, 1001 and uh, 5000, 5001 and above. So, if in a company, I have 800 members. So, this limit is for members. So, in the AGM, 5 members should come. Minimum 5 should come. If I have 1500 members in my company, then at least 15 members should come for the AGM or EGM. So, this quorum is written in section 103. 
इट इज वन जीरो थ्री का कोरम और अवा का कोरम विच एवर इज हायर सो इफ इन अवा यू हैव सेटेड हायर नंबर इफ इन अवा यू हैव सेटेड हायर नंबर देन दैट विल बी द कोरम सो वन जीरो थ्री और अवा विच एवर इज हायर इफ विद इन हाफ एन आवर कोरम इज नॉट अचीव द मीटिंग वुड बी एट जॉन मीटिंग वुड बी एट जॉन दट मीन एक्सटेंडेड बाई वन वीक टू द सेम डे सेम प्लेस सेम टाइम मीटिंग वुड बी एट जॉन बाई वन वीक टू द सेम डे सेम प्लेस सेम टाइम और सम अदर डे सम अदर प्लेस सम अदर टाइम एज अ बोल्ड मेडिसाइड तो मीटिंग वुड बी एट जॉन बाई वन वीक एट जॉन बाई वन वीक ऑलवेज रिमेंबर प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स एंड प्रॉक्सीज आर नॉट काउंटेड फॉर कोरम प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर्स एंड प्रॉक्सी आर नॉट काउंटेड फॉर कोरम प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर एंड प्रॉक्सी आर नेवर काउंटेड फॉर कोरम सर इफ ई जी एम इज कॉल्ड बाई बोर्ड कोरम इज नॉट अचीव मीटिंग वुड बी एट जॉन इफ ई जी एम इज कॉल्ड बाई दी मेंबर्स रिमेंबर ई जी एम कैन बी कॉल्ड बाई दी मेंबर्स सेक्शन हंड्रेड हंड्रेड राइट कोरम इज नॉट अचीव ई जी एम वुड बी कैंसल so read the question very thoroughly if ejm is called by the board and quorum is not achieved meeting would be adjourned if ejm is called by the members quorum is not achieved meeting would be cancelled 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 sir for adjourned meeting how many days can notice 3 days can notice for normal meeting 21 days can notice then at the adjourned meeting within half an hour if quorum is not achieved members present will be the valid quorum members present will be the valid quorum members present will be the valid quorum clear sir chairman chairman section 104 chairman char chairman chairman shall be elected among members themselves by show of hands by show of hands who want to become the chairman please raise your show of hands however if a poll is demanded poll poll is demanded audience poll okay voting on the election of chairman then the person so elected as chairman as a result of poll shall be the chairman for the rest of the meeting generally mcq chairman will be elected only by show of hands only by show of hands however if the poll is demanded on election of chairman the person so elected shall be the chairman for the rest of the meeting then 105 p r o x y five alphabets proxy p r o x y proxy sir any member can appoint proxy and proxy need not be a member any member can appoint proxy and the proxy need not be a member proxy can be outsider anybody can appoint proxy like if i am not attending reliance committee so i will send someone else in my place that someone else is called as proxy A proxy is not entitled to vote except on poll. Proxy can never vote. Proxy can never vote except on poll. An individual can be appointed as proxy on behalf of maximum fifty percent. So imagine Rahul is there. So I will say um, Rahul can be appointed on behalf of fifty percent. Okay, subject to the holding of maximum ten percent of share capital carrying voting rights. So he can be appointed on behalf of fifty people. Their their maximum holding can be ten percent of the total share capital carrying voting rights. By such fifty persons. Okay. Proxy form shall be deposited maximum forty eight hours before the meeting. Proxy form shall be deposited maximum forty eight hours before the meeting. Proxy can be changed by the member subject to the time limit of forty forty eight hours. So you can change the proxy subject to the time limit of forty eight hours. And the latest proxy will supersede the earlier proxy. The latest proxy will supersede the earlier proxy. Or such proxy form can be done subject to following conditions. Three days notice should be given to the company. Minimum three days can notice. Then it shall. Uh, commence the inspection shall commence 24 hours before the start of the meeting till the conclusion of the meeting it shall commence 24 hours before the start of the meeting till the conclusion of the meeting and should be inspected during business hours so minimum 3 days can notice inspection should start 24 hours before the meeting till the conclusion of the meeting and it can be done only during business hours then section 112 section 112 a body corporate a president of india governor of state body corporate means company llp president of india governor of state can appoint a person as a representative to their on their behalf and to vote at the meeting such representative will be counted for quorum as number of persons he represent so section c if an individual is sending someone else he is called as proxy proxy can never be count for quorum and he can never vote but if a body corporate president of india governor of state is sending someone else that person would be called as representative and he will be counted for quorum and he because he will vote he will vote now imagine rahul has been sent by president of india maharashtra government and karnataka government so rahul is representing three people so rahul will be counted for three rahul will be counted as three he is one person only but he will be counted three so such representative will be counted for quorum as a number of persons he represent as a number of persons he represents understood this much cool so now After doing our proxy P R O X Y, that's one zero five. Now we do voting V O T I N G one zero six voting. So 
can a member uh, if i don't like your face can a company restrict their voting rights the answer is no the answer is no it says no company can restrict the voting rights of any member except only one reason is there if he, the calls have not been paid up except if the calls have not been paid up that's the only reason guys that's the only reason where you can restrict nowhere else you can restrict it always remember that okay now voting how do you vote by show of hands how do you vote by show of hands that's just next section 107 107 voting by show of hands now all the resolution at general meeting what we will say all the resolution at general meeting shall be decided by show of hands except except when the poll is demanded or voting is carried out electronically except on poll or when the voting is carried out electronic so all the decisions all the decision would be always by show of hands mcq okay except when the poll is demanded or if it is carried out electronically now the declaration by chairman of passing the resolution or otherwise by show of hands and the entry in the minutes book will be a conclusive evidence that the resolution has been passed so i am show of hands the chairman says okay the resolution is passed then it will be assumed that the resolution is passed voting by electronic means every listed company every listed company or a company having minimum 1000 shareholders every listed company or a company having like unlisted company or a private company having 1000 shareholders shall provide to its member a facility to access the, their voting at by electronic means so you can vote by like electronic vote you can vote it through website or through a mobile so which company every listed company and every company having minimum 1000 shareholders so 1000 is your mcq that's 108 five was proxy six was voting how do you vote by show of hands and eight is electronic means then i have marked some page uh, 218 from the main book you can read it people who have their other teacher ka book or module you can refer voting by electronic means ka content just read for mcq purpose now 109 demand for poll very important answer a poll can be demanded either before or after the declaration of the result so you can demand a poll either before or after the declaration of the result on voting by show of hands poll can who can demand chairman member proxy proxy can also demand a poll this is also a separate question can a proxy demand poll the answer is yes now the chairman shall order a poll if a de uh, demand is made by if a company having share capital member plus member present in person or by proxy like member sitting at home member present in person proxy together together holding how much 1/10th of the voting power on the resolution or the aggregate sum of which 5 lakh have been paid up or the aggregate sum of which 5 lakh have been paid up in case of guarantee company member sitting at home member in person member by proxy holding 1/10th of the voting power on resolution this number should be request then a chairman will demand a poll so chairman can do it suo motor that is voluntary if this people request or a proxy so when uh, when you talk about member and proxy you together you add them and if they fall in this category poll can be demanded then demand for poll can be withdrawn at any time by the person who made the demand so whoever is requested he can withdraw it also a poll for adjournment of the meeting and on election of chairman must be taken immediately so two things poll for adjournment of the meeting and election of chairman should be taken immediately rest other other question can be taken within 48 hours of making the demand rest other question can be taken within 48 hours these two has to be taken immediately then resolution by postal ballot how do you do it by by sending it to the through post opc other companies having members up to 200 200 are not required to transact any business through postal ballot one person companies or other companies having members up to 200 that is maximum 200 are not required to transact the business through postal ballot that means they have to make sure they do the meeting in in person a company has a discretion to pass any resolution by postal ballot except for ordinary business items like adda wala item or any business in respect of which director or auditor have a right to be here so this too cannot be done through ballot that means it can be done physically okay opc and a private company up to 200 or other company means uh, public also up to 200 they can do meeting or they can pass a resolution only through physical presence not through postal ballot okay if other companies from whom ballot is allowed ordinary business ka item that is adda plus where the director or auditor have a right to be there that cannot be decided by ballot then read a to j transactions page 219 mean you just have to read this content okay now question number 13 important resolution requiring special notice following other resolution which requires special notice section 140 a resolution appointing an auditor other than retiring one and a resolution providing that retiring auditor shall not be reappointed same way for director a resolution appointing a director other than retiring one a resolution providing that the retiring director shall not be reappointed same content dot 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 same content 
these two require special notice special notice means 14 days notice the request for special notice shall be given to the company by members holding minimum one tenth of voting minimum one percent of voting power or holding shares of which maximum five lakh have been paid up of which maximum five lakh have been paid up one percent or holding shares of max five lakh have been paid up section number is what one one uh, five one one five Re resolution requiring special notice exam question it came in the previous attempt again it is important MCQ purpose then resolution at the adjourn meeting I had called the meeting on 20th September I have adjourned on 27th September okay now the resolution was paused at on 27th September so the question is the effective date will be from 20th that is original meeting or 27th the adjourn meeting it will be from 27th the adjourn meeting if a resolution passed at the adjourn meeting it shall be treated that is effective from the date on the date it was actually passed and not on any earlier date from the date on which it was actually passed okay MCQ resolutions and agreements to be filed with ROC section number is 117 it says a copy of every resolution any agreement explanatory statement under 102 shall be filed with ROC within 30 days of passing such resolution or making such agreement a copy of every resolution for altering the articles shall be added embodiments included in every copy of the articles issued thereafter if it is not filed then there is a penalty you can ignore company 10,100 per day maximum 2 lakh 10,000 per day uh, 10,000 hundred was per day for the officer maximum 50,000 you can ignore this section irrelevant now section 118 119 what will you write minutes and inspection of uh, minutes so refer question 9 10 and question 23 on page 232 of main book so question 9 10 and 23 this three question you have to read for minutes book I'll just quickly recall for minutes generally member has a right to inspect the minutes book right if there is a matter which is detrimental to the member or to the company chairman chairman has a power to decide what to include what to exclude nobody else on this earth chairman okay if every uh, minutes book a page has to be initialized by the chairman last page the chairman have to sign but due to any reason if chairman could not sign like he has died or he has shifted to some other place then the next meeting ka, uh, any director can sign any director of the company can sign the minutes book okay so all this thing you will read in question number 9 10 and 23 register of members every member limited by share shall maintain a register of members in form number mgt1 form number mgt1 for debenture of the security the register is mgt2 entry should be made in the register within seven days within seven days of the board or the committee approving the allotment or transfer so within seven days you will make the entry such register should be maintained at the register office of the company however it can also be kept at some other place that is in india provided where more than one ten more than more than more than more than one tenth of total members and enter in the register reside provide a special resolution in gm is passed so imagine and in bihar if my more than one tenth of the members reside so i can keep the register there also provided we have passed what special resolution all the changes should be regarding the status of members shall be updated in the register if the number of members is minimum 50 if the number of members is minimum 50 then then the maintenance of index is mandatory mcq if the number of members is minimum 50 then the maintenance of index is mandatory a company if authorized by articles can keep a part of the register outside india okay Containing the names and particulars of members, debenture holders, security holders, beneficial owners residing outside India. The company shall transmit to the register office in India a copy of the entry in the foreign register within how many days? Within 15 days after the entry is made. Like I can keep a foreign register and foreign register whenever the entry is made, it will pass on to the register office in India within 15 days. And that register shall be deemed to be a part of main register. It will be just part of that register. Main register is here only. If the register is not maintained as above, company 3 lakh penalty officer 50,000. Company 3 lakh officer 50,000. Possible, remember, or else you can ignore. Then, annual return. Sir, what is annual return? Every company shall prepare annual return in form number MGT7 and file it with the ROC within 60 days, within 60 days from the date of AGM. Very important, 60 days within 60 days from the date of AGM. However, the AGM is not held, it should be filed within 60 days from the date on which AGM should have been held, that is 30th September. Then, annual return shall be signed by the director and a CS if no CS then a CS in practice every listed company shall certify the annual return in form number MGT8 by another CS in practice okay copy of annual return shall be placed on the website and thus web link shall be given in the annual report if it is not filed within 60 days then company 10,000 10, 100 rupees per day max 2 lakh officer 10,000 100 rupees per day maximum 50,000 if CS in practice certify the annual return without the conformity of the requirements of 92 then he is liable for 2 lakh rupees so CS penalty is 2 lakh rupees all the records and registers shall be preserved for 8 years MCQ 
except register of members in india and foreign registers shall be preserved permanently so register of members in india and foreign registers shall be preserved permanently rest all the registers throughout the company will be preserved for 8 years 8 years 8 years 8 years finish so we are done with meeting also one more chapter finished cool bye guys take care enjoy and aim for a rank or 70 plus whichever is earlier cool bye guys take care so hi guys what's up today we are starting with a new topic which is called as shares okay very important unit for exam point of view close to 8 to 12 marks it will come mcq may also it is very very important it can be a very important chapter for mcq also half of the chapter is used in your uh, audit paper also i let you know from where it is used in audit let's quickly discuss one by one the first point says minimum subscription okay so it is section number 39 minimum subscription so section 39 says no allotment of shares shall be made to public unless minimum amount stated as stated in prospectus as stated in prospectus has been subscribed as stated in prospectus has been subscribed the application money on every security shall be minimum 5% that's your mcq it should be minimum 5% of the nominal value of the security so application money should be minimum 5% of the nominal value of the security or such person as may be prescribed by sebi right now it is minimum 5% Now, if minimum subscription is not achieved within 30 days from the date of issue of prospectus, then the company has to refund the money within 15 days. If they have not refunded within 15 days, then the directors and officers shall be liable shall be liable to repay the money within within with 15 interest per with 15 percent per interest per annum. Okay, so minimum subscription should be achieved within 30 days. If it is not achieved within 30 days, then you have to refund within 15 days. If you are unable to refund, then then you have to refund. I mean, you have to refund the money along with 15% interest, along with 15% interest per annum, along with 15% interest per annum. Okay, then whenever company makes an allotment, whenever company makes an allotment, the company shall file a return of allotment with ROC. You have to file a return of allotment with ROC in case of default of section uh, 39. Then it says. The officer shall be liable to minimum one thousand rupees, maximum one lakh. Minimum one thousand rupees, maximum one lakh. Minimum one thousand rupees, maximum one lakh rupees. Section number, guys, is thirty-nine. Minimum subscription. Now, return of allotment. So, whenever company allots the shares, they have to file a return of allotment. If the shares are issued for cash or for consideration other than cash, then the company shall file a return of allotment. In form number pass three, prospectus and allotment of securities. Prospectus and allotment of securities pass three within within within. So within thirty days along with the prescribed fees. Within thirty days along with the prescribed fees. So that's a part of section thirty nine only. Section forty underwriting commission. So again, it's a repetitive question of uh, uh, underwriting commission. So meaning in an underwriting contract, the underwriters guarantee the minimum subscription for which they are paid a commission, which is called as what underwriting commission. Now. It can be paid only for the shares or debentures which are offered to public. Only for the shares or debentures which are offered to public. Only for the shares or debentures which are offered to public. A. It should be authorized by AUA. A. It should be authorized by AUA. R. In case of shares, the maximum rate is five percent or AUA rate. AU prescribed AUA, AUA rate, whichever is less. For debentures, it is two point five percent or AUA, whichever is less. Five uh, percent or AUA, whichever is less. Debentures two point five percent or AUA, whichever is less. Okay. R. K. Copy of underwriting commission, copy of underwriting um, uh, agreement shall be filed with ROC along with prospect for the sound K. Copy of underwriting agreement shall be filed with ROC along with prospectus E. Eligibility, sir. Underwriters will be paid even if single share or debenture is not subscribed by them. That means if it is a uh, an over subscription, so underwriter will not take any share, but still they will get the commission because they had taken a risk when we were having when the company was having a problem. Okay. Now it can be paid out of PNL also as well as share capital also. So again, MCQ. It can be paid out of PNL also as well as share capital also. G. Details of underwriters' number of shares underwritten uh, rate should be disclosed in the resolution, and it may be paid in cash or lump sum or kind. It may be paid in cash, lump sum or kind. So this is mark section number forty, underwriting commission, underwriting commission. Okay. Now. What is irregular allotment? We have written refer question five, page one eighty. People who have studied, who are studying from model from different author, irregular allotment means. If you have contravened the section of prospectus or shares, it the whatever shares you have allotted at that time, that allotment would be irregular. What it is, that allotment will be irregular. So, for example, the basic requirement is that you have to issue shares. So, you have to issue prospectus. You have not issued prospectus only, or prospectus was issued but it was not registered with ROC, and you have allotted the shares. So, it was registered with ROC but it was containing some false, only uh, misleading statements, untrue statement. Allotment is uh, irregular. 
सर मिनिमम सब्सक्रिप्शन वॉज नॉट अचीव एंड यू हैव अलॉटेड द शेयर मिनिमम सब्सक्रिप्शन वॉज नॉट अचीव यू हैव अलॉटेड द शेयर सर एंड द एप्लीकेशन मनी इज द एप्लीकेशन मनी इज हैज टू मिनिमम फाइव परसेंट इट वॉज लेस दैन फाइव परसेंट सर स्टिल द वॉट एवर शेयर यू हैव अलॉटेड इट विल बी इन रेगुलर अलॉटमेंट सर वी हैव अप्लाइड फॉर वी हैव अप्लाइड फॉर लिस्टिंग टू द एक्सचेंज बट द परमिशन हैज नॉट बिन रिसीव द अलॉटमेंट वॉट एवर यू हैव डन इट इज इ रेगुलर सो वॉट एवर कंडीशन वर देयर यू हैव कॉन्ट्रमेंट दोज कंडीशन एंड यू हैव गिवन द अलॉटमेंट दैट अलॉटमेंट इज कॉल्ड एज इ रेगुलर अलॉटमेंट दैट अलॉटमेंट इज कॉल्ड वॉट इ रेगुलर अलॉटमेंट नाउ सर सेक्शन नंबर फिफ्टी टू इट इज सिक्योरिटी प्रीमियम सेक्शन नंबर फिफ्टी टू सिक्योरिटी प्रीमियम आर पी इज बी बी आर पी इज बी बी आर सर सेक प्रेम कैन यूज ओली फॉर फाइव पर्पज रिडम्शन ऑफ प्रीम रिडम्शन ऑफ प्रिफ्रेंस सॉरी प्रीमियम ऑन रिडम्शन ऑफ प्रिफ्रेंस एंड डिबेंचेस पी राइटिंग ऑफ प्रीमियम एक्सपेंसिस आई Writing of share and debenture issue expenses B bonus shares once more B buyback of shares sec prem can be used only for five purpose other than this five purpose sec prem cannot be used anywhere if the company has used sec prem for other than this five then the company has contravened section number fifty two company has contravened section number fifty two sir what is fifty three sir prohibition on issue of shares at discount no company shall issue a share at discount and if they have issued such such issue will be void such issue shall be void. If fifty three is contravened, what will happen? Sir, amount raised for discount issue is a penalty. Or rupees five lakhs, which share is less, will be the penalty. Along with that, you have to refund the money. Along with that, you have to refund the money at the rate of twelve percent interest per annum. So penalty plus refunding the amount plus interest, all three things would be there. So company can issue shares at discount to two people. One at the time of sweat equity shares. Other when the shares are given to creditors, when the debt is converted into equity as per the scheme approved by RBI. As per the scheme approved by RBI. Clear? So two exceptions. It was asked in the exam. One is sweat equity shares. Other one is when the shares are given to the creditors, when the debt is converted into equity, equity as per the scheme approved by RBI. Now, section number fifty-four. It says explain sweat equity shares. So sweat equity shares are given to employees. Take okay, a sweat equity shares will be given to employees. So some companies may issue sweat equity shares at discount or for consideration other than cash (MCQ) at discount or for other than cash to their employees or director for their value. Additions, intellectual property, technical know-how, etc. Now, what are the conditions? So, the code is sweat. S shares should be of same class already issued. W when when will you issue it, sir? At any point of time, company can issue. E employee and director details like number of shares, market price, concession, if any, should be disclosed in the resolution. A it should be authorized by SR for sweat equity. It is or uh, SR. T terms and condition. In case of listed company, you have to comply with SEBI rules. In case of unlisted company, you have to comply with central government rules. Central government rules. Okay. Now. The company can issue amendment. The company can issue sweat equity shares for a maximum of fifteen percent of its paid-up capital in a year, or shares of rupees five crores, whichever is higher. So, in terms of number, it is fifteen percent. Uh, in terms of value, it is five crores. So, what word should be five crores, whichever is higher. Subject to maximum, subject to maximum twenty-five percent of paid-up capital at any point of time. Subject to maximum twenty-five percent of the paid-up capital at any point of time, fifteen percent or five crores, whichever is higher, whichever is higher. Subject to maximum twenty-five percent of paid-up capital at any point of time. However. However, a startup company may issue. However, a startup company may issue sweat equity shares of maximum fifty uh, percent of the paid up capital up to ten years. So, if it is a startup company, you will issue, you can issue maximum fifty percent of the paid up capital up to ten years from the date of incorporation. May twenty three question number one a law paper C A inter May twenty three. Please solve that question. It's very 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 important. Okay, it was on this, in this concept only startup wala concept. So they have given two solution. You can follow either of it. ICA has given correct to both. So I repeat, May twenty-three question number one is suggested of ICA. Suggested of ICA. Okay. Now, redemption of preference shares. You just have to read. Company can redeem the preference shares. Okay. And when you are redeeming it, sir, you have to pass SR. You have to pass SR. SR. Okay. Then, very important distinguish diminution of capital, reduction of capital. Diminution of capital, reduction of capital. If you cancel your authorized capital. That means market is market is not getting affected. You are cancelling your authorized capital. That means the market is not getting affected. It is called as diminution of capital. You are cancelling your subscribed capital. Your market is getting affected. It is reduction of capital. In the both tribunal ka approval is required. Okay, for one OR is required. For other one SR is required. OR is required. SR is required. Clear? Okay, this I have to read from the book. Now purchase of own shares. Section number is what? Sixty-seven. Purchase of own shares. Sir, no company, no company means no company can buy its own securities, that is, own shares at or give loan guarantee security to any person to buy the shares in its company or its in holding company. So, no company can give buy uh, buy the own shares or give money or guarantee or security to anybody to buy shares in the same company or in the holding company or in the holding company. 
हाउ यूर कंपनी कैन गिव लोन फॉर बाइंग शेयर इन इट और इन इट्स होल्डिंग कंपनी प्रोवाइड ऑल द थ्री कंडीशन आर फुलफिल्ड प्रोवाइड ऑल द थ्री कंडीशन आर फुलफिल्ड सर वॉट आर द थ्री कंडीशन If it is given to its employees other than director or KMP, that means normal employees. If it is given to the normal employees, number two, amount is maximum six months' ka salary. Amount is maximum six months' ka salary, and and the amount should be used to purchase fully paid up shares. The amount you should be used to purchase fully paid up shares. If it is given to, it is to be given to the employees other than the director and KMP. Number two, and and maximum six months' ka salary you can give as a loan. Number three, and the amount uh, should be used to purchase fully paid up shares to put paid uh, to purchase fully paid up shares. The shares held by the employee will be in the capacity of beneficial owner. He is not the actual owner; he is just the beneficial owner. He is not the actual owner; he is just the beneficial owner. Clear? Now, section sixty-eight. It says buyback of shares. Section sixty-eight says buyback of shares. So sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Company can buy back how much? Maximum twenty-five percent of paid-up capital. Company can buy back maximum twenty-five percent of paid-up equity share capital. So company can buy back maximum twenty five percent of paid up equity share capital, and which shares can be bought back? Sir, only fully paid up equity shares can be bought back. What is required, sir? SR is required for buy back. However, if the buy back is up to ten percent, uh, then we require only BR. We require only BR. Okay. So what are the sources of buy back? Number one is free reserve. Number two is sec prime. Number three proceeds of fresh issue. Now buy back should be authorized by AWA. Uh, fresh issue, sec prime, fresh issue, fresh sec prime, and free reserve. Only this can be used for buy back. Okay. Always remember this. Now. The entire buyback should be completed within 12 months of passing BR or SR. So period is 12 months. This was also asked in the exam. The company is prohibited from issuing same class of shares for the next six months. The company is prohibited from issuing same class of shares for the next six months. Post buyback, the debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1. Post buyback, the debt equity ratio should be 2 is to 1. Now, as per section 16, if a company buyback the shares out of free reserves or out of sec prime, an amount equal to the nominal value, nominal value, that is the face value of the share, should be transferred to CRR. And the money in share can be used only for one purpose. That is only for issuing fully paid up, paid up bonus share, fully paid up bonus shares. Then, as per section seventy, following is a prohibition for buyback. Okay, very important answer. This can be asked separately. Number one, through any subsidiary company, including its own subsidiary, you can't buy back. Through investment or group of investment company, you can't buy back. If the company has different repayment of deposits, interest, redemption of debentures, preference shares, payment of dividend, the loan ka interest or loan amount. Then you can't buy back. This this prohibition would be lifted if the default default has been rectified, and the period of three years have elapsed, and the three years and the period of three years have elapsed after the rectification of such default. That means this prohibition is lifted if the company has rectified the default and over a period of three years has passed after the rectification of such default. Okay, if company has default in filing annual return or dividend uh, contraventions or penalty for failure to pay dividend and FS, still you can't do buy back. Still you can't do buy back. If section 68, section 70 is contravent, company liable for one lakh to three lakh, officer one to three lakh. So 68, 69, 70, 68 is on your buyback, 69 is on CRR, 70 is on prohibition of buyback. All three are important. 67 is purchase of own shares, purchase of own shares. Last answer, right issue. If a company goes for public offer, the shares should be first offered to existing shareholders only by a notice. Okay. The notice should contain all the particulars, that is number of shares offered, time and Okay, time that is minimum fifteen days, maximum thirty days. Minimum fifteen days, maximum thirty uh, days. Fifteen days can be reduced, but at least seven days are required. At least they should revert back within seven days. The minimum it has to be seven days. The above right is given only to equity shareholders, only to equity shareholders, and not to preference shareholders. If you remember, right of renunciation, you can sell that right. Right of renunciation is available to existing shareholders. However, issue can be offered to outsiders if if SR is passed by the shareholder, OR is passed, and CJ ka approval is taken. Okay, if it is declined by the existing shareholders, conversion of debenture into shares and reissue of forfeited share. In this case, you can directly offer to outsiders, not going to the existing shareholders. Then, last answer is issue of bonus shares. We have written refer question thirty one, page one ninety. Very simple. Company will offer bonus shares only to existing shareholders. Whatever bonus shares they are offering, it has to be fully paid up. Existing shareholding should also be fully paid up. Okay, money, money will come from uh, free reserve. Okay, and uh, sec prime and uh, CRR and CRR. If the company has defaulted in repayment of loan to the bank or public ka money or deposits or employee dues, you can't go for bonus shares. You can't go for bonus shares. If company says bonus shares can be issued in lieu of dividend, the answer is incorrect. Dividend is different. Bonus shares are different. Section number sixty-three, bonus shares. Cool. So it was a very important unit. Small, small things, uh, days, days, and the provisions are very, very, very important. Buy back, remember, purchase the bonus shares, remember, and that startup wala question. स्वेट इक्विटी शेवला फ्रॉम क्वेश्चन नंबर वन ए मे ट्वेंटी थ्री सजेस्ट प्लीज डू दैट थरली इट्स वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट कुल सो गाइज विद दिस वी फिनिश आर एंटायर मैराथॉन 
I know I was late, but I had promised that I'll give it. I'm very sorry for that. I could not record it due to some reasons, but I've given my best to you guys. Please do all these chapters what we have done thoroughly. Handwritten notes are available. Okay, handwritten notes are available in the Telegram group, or you can visit my website www.letslearnindia.in. From there, you can get it. Uh, number two. Okay, for uh, general clauses as interpretation of statutes, general clauses interpretation of statutes and negotiable to some extent. At least for this chapters, I know it's, it's very dry chapter. Do pass questions thoroughly. Pass question ka sheet also, I mean exam question ka sheet also have circulated in the Telegram group. You can find there. Okay, and I will be uploading it today. It's not uploaded. I'll be uploading it on Let's Learn India. Dot in. You can download it from there also. The pass questions. When you do the pass question, just do that question thoroughly. You will clear for sure. You will clear. Okay, so go to www. Let's Learn India. Dot in. In that free resources, in that you will find the this handwritten notes also. Plus, you will find it the uh, pass questions of general clauses and interpretation also. In case you can't go to the website, you can download from the Telegram group, our Telegram group. Okay. I hope I guys I I get to see you in CA final because in CA final I'll be teaching you audit as law is not there now so I'll be teaching you audit because I teach both the subject for law and audit for inter and final I hope I get to see you in class people will be having a CA final very soon you can buy recorded lectures live lectures pen drive lectures whatever you are comfortable cool so connect with me on YouTube Instagram Telegram wherever you want I'll be there to help you all the guy uh, all the best guys aim for a rank or 70 plus which is earlier. do like the video comment and share with your friends so the maximum people take the benefit of this video and let's meet in ca final okay bye guys take care enjoy hi guys what's up so today we are starting with a chapter called as foreign exchange management act okay four marks to eight marks it can go to 10 also including mcq the four marks to 10 marks foreign exchange management act so it says any transactions first one is capital account transaction any transactions which alter the assets or liabilities outside india of a person person resident in india assets or liabilities including contingent liability of uh, outside india of a person resident in india or vice versa assets or liabilities including contingent liability in india of a proy person resident outside india it is called as what capital account transaction what it is it is called as capital account transaction now important definition current account transaction what is current account transaction it means a transaction which is other than a capital account transaction Current account means what? A transaction which is other than capital account transaction. Acha, what it will include? Like your basic, basic personal things like payment due in connection with the foreign trade or other current business service or short term banking or any credit facilities or in the ordinary course of business or in the ordinary course of business. Payment made due as interest on loan. So loan is a capital account. Interest on loan, current account. Net income from investments. Investments, capital account. Net income, current account. Now. Remittance for living expenses of parents, spouse, children, and residing abroad. Like you are making payment for uh, to for your parents. Expenses in connection with the foreign travel, education, medical care of parents, spouse, and children. All this is your, your current account transaction. They can ask us to identify, or they can ask us explain current account transaction. Three mark, four mark answer. So what does export means? So export basically means taking in goods, any goods outside India to a place outside India, or services, giving services outside India. Okay. Import. What is import means? Import means bringing into India. any goods or services foreign security foreign security means any security in the form of stocks shares bonds debentures or any other instrument which is denominated or expressed in foreign currency including any return any return interest or dividend payable in indian currency any return or interest or dividend payable in indian currency understood now explain pri what will you say explain pri pri means what sir Person resident in India. Prime means what? Person resident in India. Sir, a pri is an individual residing in India for how many days? For more than, more than, more than, more than one eighty two. That is basically one eighty three days. How many days? One eighty three days in the previous in the previous financial year, but does not include a. Sir, a means what? A person who has gone outside India or who has stays outside India in either case for b business or vocation outside India a in their purpose which will indicate his uncertain period and e employment outside India. So, sir, it will not include. It will not be included in prior. That means these people will become what prior from the day they go outside India. From the day they go outside India. B, a person who has come to India or stay in India. Otherwise, then for B. So, till year, till year, you are prior. Otherwise, then means if you are coming to India for business or any other purpose for uncertain period or for employment in India, you become prior from the day you come to India. Important answer. Important definition. Then a body corporate in India. Then a branch office agency owned or controlled by proy. Then any branch office agency owned or controlled by proy. 
what it is it is also person resident in india explain proy so proy means what proy means a person who is not a resident of india there are four illustrations in the module also in the book also people who have my book one two four same illustrations have we have copied there on page three point one two very 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 important illustration those will only be repeated then sir what is current account transaction list so as per foreign exchange management current account transaction rules following is the list sir schedule one two three what will say schedule one two three schedule one two three rule three four five rule three four five this is prohibited call list this is cg call list this is rbi call list it's prohibited call list cg call list and rbi call list okay there are eight items how would you say gande kaam like bad works uh, all bad work like call back services there then uh, lottery tickets is there band magazines is there all those all those are in prohibited call list you don't have to mug up the entire list you have to understand always remember bad work prohibited acha transport ka items transport ka items is in cg call list okay then personal things are in rbi call list like if an individual there are individuals they have given nine items up to 250000 dollar what amount up to 250000 dollar up to 250000 dollar per person per financial you can remit for your personal use like private visit education everything is there 250 okay others may they have given the five limits five limits is there now however no approvals require the payment is made into uh, out of rfc or efc account no approvals require the payment is made out of rfc or efc that's resident foreign currency account or exchange foreign currency account exchange earners foreign currency account no approval is required sir what it is Now listen. So like this list is there. CG का मैं bad work transportation is in uh, sorry prohibited is prohibited का list bad work. CG is basically transportation. RBI में they have given two lakh fifty का LRS liberalised remittance scheme. However, if you are using the money from immigration uh, and uh, medical treatment abroad, studies abroad, two lakh fifty is not applicable. It is on the basis of the on the basis of that they have given. What do you say? The estimation they have given. Estimation from the immigration country, estimation from the doctor abroad, estimation from their university. You can transfer more than two fifty also. Then, if you are a person resident in India but not permanent resident, and you are a citizen of a state other than Pakistan or a citizen of India who is on deportation to India, you can remit net salary even though it is more than two fifty. You can remit your net salary without RBI approval. Okay, this is important. There is a question in the model on this. Okay. Then. Five limits. Five limits for other than individuals. First one: donation by cooperate. How much you can give? One person of foreign exchange earning of three years or fifty lakh dollar, whichever is less. Up to this amount you can give. If you go beyond that, you require RBI approval. However, approval is not required. The payment is made out of RFC and EFC. Okay. Number two: uh, reimbursement of pre-incorporation expenses. How much you can give? Five percent of inward remittance or one lakh dollar, whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. Whichever is higher. This is higher. Okay. Higher. 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 Always remember, donation has to be less. Donation has to rest. Both the limits are higher. Okay, up to this limit you can give. If you go beyond the limit, you require RBI approval. However, approval is not required if the payment is made out of RFC or EFC. Okay, consultancy, big consultancy, big means like infra consultancy, power, railway, seaport, airport, big big consultancy. One crore dollar per project. How much will you say? One crore dollar per project. One crore dollar per project. Small consultancy, like vastu consultancy for my house. Ten lakh dollar per project. Up to this, no approval beyond that RBI approval. If the payment made out of RFC, EFC, no approval. Then commission per transaction to the agents abroad for sale of residence flats or commercial plots in India. So if some my agent has sell my flat, I have to give him commission. How much I can give? Five percent of inward remittance or twenty five thousand dollar, which is higher. Up to this, no approval. Beyond this, RBI approval is required. Okay. If payment is made out of credit card, no approval is required because RBI knows it, knows it, right? No approval is required. Correct. Done with the limit. So prior prior ka answer, limit ka answer. These two are important. Explain capital account transaction. You can read this. Time pass it is. This one. As per FEMA, capital account transactions rules 2000 following are CAT. So it is permissible by prior and prior. So they have given the list. Always remember, asset liability in India, person will be outside India. Asset liability outside India, person will be in India. That is permitted call list. Okay, that is RTB. Sir, where restrictions can't be imposed. RBI can't impose restriction on. Amortization of loan, depreciation of direct investment. Amortization of loan, depreciation of direct investment. RBI cannot impose any restriction there. Okay, it is freely permitted. Okay, then prohibited. Very, very, very important list. Very important list. Prohibited call list. So five things may you can't do foreign exchange transactions. Like for, it can't be done in foreign currency. First one. So no prior shall make investment in India which is engaged in business of chit fund, nidhi company, and AFP. Chit fund, nidhi company, AFP, agricultural farmers plantation. Fourth. 
real estate business fifth three dia transferable development rights in this five things you can't do you can't use foreign exchange no pro you can make investment no pro you can make investment in the company which is doing business of chit fund nidhi afp uh, real estate business and tdr however real estate business will not include what development of township construction of residential commercial houses bridges and trust that means pro you can make investment this pro you can make investment so pro pro ka definition okay including that company wala company ka branch outside that country that controls this branch in the model we have done a lot of questions in the book also we have done then that cg ka list prohibited list rbi ka list then rbi ka list for other than individuals and this prohibited list this three four answers are repeated it will only come in the exam okay so here pro i can't make investment very 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 important answer cool done fast track super fast track crash course done for my is over cool Bye guys take care enjoy and aim for a rank or 70 plus which is earlier bye guys So hi guys I hope you guys have enjoyed the all the revision videos marathon videos and I hope aapne bahut achhi padhai kar li hogi you must have studied and I had uh, I have I hope I have helped you in preparing your exam okay now last 5 minutes from my side so when you're revising it this is a revision pattern which I have already shared in the class ठीक है तो फर्स्ट यू डू फॉरन कंपनीज एंड प्रिलिमिनरी वन स्मॉल चैप्टर एंड वन यू डू इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर देन यू डू एलएलपी प्लस मेंबरशिप वाला यूनिट देन यू डू इंटरप्रिटेशन जीसीए एंड एलएलपी वाला एक्ट देन यू डू फाइव इन कॉपरेशन वाला चैप्टर पूरा देन यू डू डिविडेंट प्लस मऊआ हुआ अकाउंट्स प्लस प्रोस्पेक्टस देन यू डू ऑडिटर प्लस प्रोस्पेक्टस अगर कुछ रह जाता है प्रोस्पेक्टस में से देन यू डू चार्जेस प्लस शेयर्स यू डू डिपॉजिट प्लस शेयर्स इलेवन चैप्टर यू डू मीटिंग्स ट्वेल्थ यू डू फेमा ओके सो दिस इज द पैटर्न यू विल फॉलो इट वेन यूर रिवाइसिंग इट ओके जनरली आई एज्यूम दैट यू विल गेट अप बाई सेवन थर्टी भाई उठ जाना सेवन थर्टी नाइन थर्टी यू रिवाइज लॉ देन यू डू सम प्रैक्टिकल सब्जेक्ट देन अगेन यू डू प्रैक्टिकल एंड इवनिंग अगेन सेवन टू नाइन यू डू लॉ सो लास्ट लॉट लाइक पोस्ट डिनर इधर यू कैन रिवाइज लॉ और वॉट यू कैन डू इज वॉट एवर कंटेंट यू हैव डन यू रिवाइज द एंटायर कंटेंट सो क्या हो गया सेकेंड टाइम रिविजन डन सेकेंड टाइम रिविजन डन ऑन द सेम डे ओके नाउ वेन यू कमिंग आफ्टर योर अकाउंट्स पेपर सो पहला वॉट यू हैव टू डू यू टू रिवाइज डिविडेंट अकाउंट्स ऑर्टर्स 25 to 30 marks. Then chutti de means be a holiday till your lunch break. You do other laws ka part LLP, uh, interpretation statutes, GCA, FEMA. Revise it out. Okay. Then you do all important chapters. Mawa, awa, incorporation, shares, prospectus, repetitive chapter. Then till the dinner time you break. You finish your all the balance chapters are there. Now this is again budgeted. Actual will come something else. So you have to do the leftovers plus this attempt ka RTP plus this attempt ka mock one and mock two. Finish it off. Okay. So this is your ideal revision pattern. You should follow this and. In case if you have one more holiday, so what can you do? Double time. You into two. Revise same pattern. Double. Now, when the paper comes, one forty-five, you will get the question paper. You will not get the answer sheet. Answer sheet will come at two o'clock. One forty-five, you decide. Do uh, MCQ will not be there. MCQ का paper will not be given. Only descriptive का paper would be given. So you first decide what question you want to attempt. Question number one gonna be the most, 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 most toughest question. Question number one gonna be the most toughest question there. So what do you do now? So just plan. Okay, question number five. पहले करना है कि three you have to do, two you have to do. Plan it out. Then two o'clock को when uh, answer sheet के साथ you will get the MCQ का paper, question paper. Keep that paper under the desk. Don't look up to it. First you finish off your descriptive. So from two p.m. to four p.m. guys, from two p.m. to four p.m. What will you do? You will finish off your descriptive. From two p.m. to four p.m. What will you do? You will first finish off your descriptive. Okay. Then uh, when you aim for four p.m. by four fifteen it will be done. So last forty five minutes for like from four fifteen uh, you will do the MCQs. So close to ten questions are there for one mark, five question for two mark, five question for two mark. So close to twenty question forty five minutes, two minutes per question. Easily होता है, easily होता है. Paper gets completed very easily. Don't leave the paper. Write all the questions. Even if you do not know or write any nonsense shit, teacher will give you zero. There is no negative marking. But complete the paper. Do not leave the exam hall before five o'clock. Do not leave the exam hall before five o'clock. Understood? so follow this pattern in case aapko acha laga ho do like the video comment and share with your friends and i hope i get to see you in ca final aim for a one last time one last time aim for a rank or 70 plus whichever is earlier because if you get 70 i will take you to touch okay that's promise from my side guys all the best and i hope i get to see you in ca final bye bye take care and do message me on instagram telegram how do you find the marathon revisions lectures everything and i hope you make your parents very proud bye guys take care ciao bye